Thank you very much, councillors. Uh, Reverend Yu, uh, members of the gallery, the press, and I pay particular uh, tribute or uh, make particular mention rather of uh, former mayor and councillor, Mr. Peter Spears, who's sitting in his uh, old stomping ground. Uh, a warm welcome to you, Mr. Spears. Uh, now, this meeting is being recorded and will be placed on Tomorrowshire Council's webpage for public information. And all present today are reminded that while speaking that you are agreeing to your view and comments being recorded and published. And you're also reminded that if or when speaking that we are to be respectful to others and use appropriate language, which of course Tomorrowshire Council does. Uh, Council accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures during this council meeting. Having said that, I would now invite uh, Reverend Derek Yu from St Andrews Presbyterian Church who will lead us in our opening prayer. Thank you, Reverend. On behalf of the Tomorrow Christian leaders, I thank you for the opportunity to open your meeting in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care. And thank you that you hear our prayers. You know our hearts and you know our prayers before we even utter them. There are many things in the life of our community that we want to now entrust to you. We pray that this dreaded virus would go away. We pray that vaccines would work in protecting lives, especially those who are most vulnerable in our community and society. We pray for families who have lost loved ones. Please comfort them. We pray for people who have lost income and livelihoods due to lockdowns. We pray that their livelihoods would be sustained. We pray that the outbreaks in Melbourne and Sydney would be contained. Father, we thank you for the rain. We pray that the rain would greatly bless our farmers and our community. And we pray that there would be an abundant harvest this year. We pray for those in our community who are struggling, those who are feeling lonely and isolated, those who are sick, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, those who are wrestling with mental illness, depression, anxiety. Father, please comfort them, strengthen them, and we pray that you will support them through our community here in tomorrow. We thank you for the various medical services and community groups that care for those in need. Father, we also thank you that you are the one who appoints government to rule over people, and one day they will be held accountable to you. We pray that you will help our leaders, our councillors. We pray that you would help our leaders on a local level, state level, and the federal level to govern justly. Help our leaders to make policies that reflect your love for our community, your love for the marginalised, and your love for the needy. Help them to lead as Christ led, not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a sacrifice for many. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend. Uh, always lovely words to start our meeting off. And thank you uh, very much for, for sharing those with us. Uh, Councillors, we have an apology from the General Manager, who I understand uh, is currently in Darwin doing something physical, and uh, which is fantastic. So we do hope uh, uh, that he comes back uh, healthy and in one piece. And uh, his first day back, I understand, is uh, the 6th of July. And our Acting General Manager, uh, is doing a, a fine, fine job. Uh, no further apologies. Has someone moved that the general managers, thank you, Councillor Slay, Councillor Oliver, moved and seconded all those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Any declaration of any interest, councillors, at this time, please? If not, let us proceed. We do not have any public presentations. 
Councillors, we have two uh, lots of minutes to confirm, please. The first one, I'd require a motion that the last ordinary meeting of Tomorrow's Shire Council, held on the 20th of May, be approved as a true uh, and correct record. Big pardon? Oh, it was one resolution. Oh, seems a bit odd. Uh, well, uh, evidently, the computer program has it as two, uh, sorry, two lots of minutes in the one resolution, which uh, I, I would have thought they need to be considered separately. Yeah. So, oh, we can do that. I'll do it. Right, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, the ordinary council meeting held on the 20th of May 2021. Can I have a motion, please, that that be uh, received as a true and correct record? The Deputy Mayor, thank you, has moved that way. Second, Councillor Winky moved and seconded. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Matters arising, Madam Acting General Manager? Uh, no matters arising. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, we next... Uh, have the special council meeting that we held to consider the Stronger Country Communities Fund Round 4 uh, grant projects that was held on the 8th of June 2021. Will someone that was present care to move that they be received as true and correct? Thank you, Councillor Smith. The second, Councillor Oliver. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, councillors, let's now proceed to the mayoral minute for the month of June. Number one, after recent press articles on the New South Wales General Manager's salary packages, Council is advised that the New South Wales Minister for Local Government, the Honourable Shelley Hancock MP, has now released a review paper of general manager and senior staff remuneration. Now, remember, councillors, that Tomorrow's Shire only has one senior staff member, which is the general manager. So I know we collectively say senior staff here, uh, but as far as uh, the official uh, record and under the Act that um, senior staff for Tomorrow's Shire is the general manager. The Minister has indicated that the New South Wales Government is strongly considering mandating salaries of general managers, uh, they be set by an independent body, not by elected councillors. The Minister also points out that there are several general managers in New South Wales that have uh, salary packages ranging from 143000 through to uh, $633,000. The Minister is calling for submissions from councils, citizens and businesses to assist in forming the review. The submissions will close on the... 2nd of August 2021. As this is a very serious matter and one that requires a great deal of consideration by Council, I propose that Council hold a workshop to formulate our response to the review. In recent discussions with our local government New South Wales President, Councillor Linda Scott, she expressed a firm view that Council's the best place to make the decision on general managers' salary packages. There's a recommendation, councillors, that uh, council hold a workshop to formulate a response to the New South Wales Minister for Local Government's review on general managers and senior staff salary packages. Uh, number two, council place on record our warm congratulations to former federal member for Riverina, Mrs Kay Hull AM, on her recent inclusion in the Queen's Birthday Honours List. Mrs Hull was appointed an officer of the Order of Australia for distinguished service to rural and regional communities through health, skills development and agricultural organisations. And this is a well-deserved award for an outstanding individual. And councillors, there's a recommendation there that council write a letter of congratulations to Mrs Hull on her Queen's birthday honour. And number three, council is informed that the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Graham Sinclair, and I will be attending the National Press Club luncheon next Tuesday, the 22nd of June, as guests of the LGNSW President, Councillor Scott. And we look forward to being present to listen to Councillor Scott deliver her first 
Press Club Luncheon Address as President of the Australian Local Government Association. Number four, Council is advised that the Riverina Eastern Regional Organisation of Councils, the REROC Board, will be hosting a meeting with the New South Wales Member for Wagga Wagga, Dr Joe McGurr, next Friday the 25th of June. The Board also invited uh, the New South Wales Members for Cootamundra and Albury, however, they had made previous commitments. It must be noted that the Member for Cootamundra has already held a special meeting recently with the REROC Board to discuss the issues of cost shifting. The REROC Board will continue to arrange a meeting with the New South Wales Member for Albury to discuss this important issue in a round table atmosphere. Uh, number five, Council is advised of the official opening of segment 12 of Morangel Road on Wednesday the 30th of June. This will be carried out at 11am on site by the New South Wales Minister for Regional Transport and Roads, the Honourable Paul Tool MP. Prior to this, there will be a meeting with our State Member for Cootamundra, Ms Steph Cook MP, at the Recreation Centre at 9am. Number six, I have been asked by the Mayor of Forbes, Councillor Phyllis Miller, OAM, to formally advise Council of her intention to stand as President for Local Government New South Wales. This year, members will elect a new President, which will come from the rural and regional New South Wales. The Mayor Miller is a current board member on both the LGNSW and the Australian Local Government Association boards and uh, Mayor Miller is also a former president of the former New South Wales Shires Association. And finally, Council is advised of a letter received yesterday from our New South Wales Minister for Local Government, the Honourable Shelley Hancock MP. The letter informs Council that the New South Wales Government will provide a one-off payment to fully fund the increase in the emergency services levy, the ESL, for the 2021-22 financial year. The Acting General Manager, Mrs Elizabeth Smith, informs me that that should equate to $32,059, which breaks down to, for the Blandshire, $18,415, and Tamora Shire, $13,644. So this brings the total amount funded by the New South Wales Government to cover the increases in the ESL since 2019 to $485,955. It is Council's unwritten policy to extend genuine praise when it has been earned, and to this end, I have rung the Minister's office to extend our thanks for this important gesture. And there is a recommendation, councillors, that, uh, that Council will formally write a letter of appreciation to Minister Hancock uh, for the reimbursement uh, of the increase in the ESL, and further that Council encourage the Minister to support councils having the ability to include ESL as a separate line item on rates notices as advocated by LGNSW, New South Wales Country Mayors Association, RERock and Riverina Jaya Boards when it comes before the New South Wales Lower House. So just as an addendum to that, councillors, that, uh, that has been passed to have it as a separate line item on the 8th of June in the Upper House, so now it needs to be considered in the lower house. Uh, we thought this was all done previously and it was not done. There was a different uh, act uh, that was um, considered and uh, so now we're back to the drawing board. So councillors, that is the mayoral minute and I'm happy to move as Mayor, its adoption. Is there a second for the motion, please? Councillor Winky, thank you. Moved and seconded. Is there discussion? There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. It's clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, we now go to our business paper and uh, committee reports on page 11. The Assets and Operations Committee report, and Councillor Winky is the chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I'll just move that the uh, reports be uh, received. Thank you, Councillor Winky. Has moved the reports received. Is there a second for the motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Slay. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you, Councillor Winky. Do you have any matters that you wish to raise? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, there's nothing that I need to bring up, and I'm sure there'll be something that someone else will bring up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Winky. Uh, councillors, any items out of the Assets and Operations Committee reports? Uh, we have Councillor Judd. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor, Councillors. The um, referring to the first item on the Main Street upgrade plans and the um, probably the page 16 the resolution, you would have noted there that uh, myself and a couple of councillors voted against this recommendation. I'd just like to say we weren't voting against them upgrade the main street just on the uh, motion on how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, I'll go back in the last few months we talked about this upgrade plans a few times, especially the high option and uh, being uh, similar to the two central blocks and that being referred to as the gold standard option. In my opinion, uh, this is not the gold standard, this should be the standard of how we should be trying to do our main street in tomorrow. We worked hard to get this despite opposition in 2004. I don't believe it's over the top and has really been a boon for the main street and we often get very favourable comments from visitors. As I said a few months ago, I've been embarrassed that it has taken us 17 years to come back and revisit these two adjoining blocks. When I come to Tamora and see the southern block in particular, I cringe at just how ordinary and unloved it has looked. To our present debate on the present options, it was good to see in all options that it is proposed to replace all the present concrete paths and that trees are a feature of all options in enhancing our main street. I've heard a lot of comments referring to both the northern and southern blocks as like a concrete and bitumen desert. So getting trees into the street and the right trees are a vital part of this solution. With the northern block, we all agree that because it is a predominantly commercial and industrial precinct and with numerous driveways, the low option is probably the best option. The plan to add a number of good trees to the block will certainly help lift the amenity of the area. But is the southern block we really need to put a lot of thought and planning into? I'm very optimistic about how this southern block could develop into one of the most popular social gathering, retail, community services and residential areas of tomorrow. One only has to see what this new business in the Mee Lin building has done for that end of town. At times you're lucky to find a park in that block. And many of these cars are visitors from out of town. It has become a destination. The subject of revitalisation of the main street in Zamora has been a continual project of our local heritage committee. You can already see the results of, in buildings like the John Maher building, painted with new sign writing. What a difference it makes to our local streetscape. Now the committee is turning its attention to restoring and fixing up the verandas in the main street. We're hoping to have a fund in this present budget, but being not quite ready, I hope the next council will support a fund in next year's budget. What is my point? If council gives encouragement to these owners of these buildings and these businesses, either through the heritage funds or plans, to, and plans to revitalise the next two adjoining blocks, it could be amazing what could develop in tomorrow. We hear from our real estate agents that, that there is unprecedented demand for property in tomorrow, both in buying and building, and or finding a place to rent. So to our debate on the plans for the Southern Block. Our engineer said at committee last week that in the scheme of things, there is not a big cost difference between the low, medium and high options. A point we can't agree on is the placement of the street lights. In the low and medium options, the street lights remain where they are at the moment and the share are blistered with the trees. In the high option, high option, we would relocate the street lights onto the footpath and away from the trees, this being the same as the central two blocks. I will argue that in the long term it will be much better to separate the tr trees and the lights and we won't have to put up long extensions on the lights to give extra cover, we won't have to plant species that only have narrow foliage and our parks and garden staff won't be regularly trying having to trim the trees. I feel we need better plans, elevations and 3D drawings of the southern blocks to be able to make an informed decisions. Here we are making, with our plans we had last week, trying to make a very important decision on our future Main Street and all we had for an overhead plan and street lights only represented by us little white dots. Mr Mayor, I would propose that we separate this recommendation into two parts. One, we have a motion supporting the costings to be developed for the northern block with the low option as the guide, but second, that we defer decision on the southern block while we obtain more visual plans, elevations and 3D street, streetscape drawings of the two options so we can really make an informed decision on how we want this important part of our main street to look. 
as our engineer has said, we must work out the vision of how we would like the street to look for future generations, and we must get it right in the first place. You can't start the project with one, one option, then decide a few years later, oh, we should have done it the other way. Sorry, it's too late. And so I'm asking councillors to uh, reconsider, and I'll be putting that motion up if, after more discussion, if it looks. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Judd. I think that uh, uh, all of us in this chamber, uh, Councillor Judd, uh, obviously we're all committed to ensuring that, uh, that we beautify our, uh, the other blocks. It's always been the goal, uh, the southern and the northern blocks. And uh, uh, so I think we're on a unity ticket there, uh, that's for sure. Uh, it's just how we, how we get there. Uh, and uh, uh, let's now go to some other comments in relation to, you've heard from Councillor Judd, are there any other comments about what Councillor Judd has uh, indicated in relation to the proposed Hoskins Street upgrade plans or any other items in the Assets and Operations Committee report? Councillor Reinhardt. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I'm sorry I wasn't here for the Assets and Ops meeting. Um, uh, I agree with Nigel that, oh, sorry, Councillor Judd, that uh, this has taken way too long. Um, having been in business, uh, a retailer in the other block, um, uh, what do I say? I feel it was that this is just way, way too long. I feel sorry for the businesses down that end of town. Uh, it's very daggy, very depressing, really. Um, my concern is for the Tiger Moth Cafe uh, with parking of semi-trailers. Um, if you look at the night time, uh, there's semis parked on both sides of the street. So if we could take into consideration uh, the parking bays that they're mm. big enough to accommodate mm. um, semis. So that would be for now. Good point. Thank you, Councillor Reinhold. Further Discussion on the Assets and Operations Committee report. Councillor Slay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It is indeed a very good point that we look at the question of the semis, but I'd like a bit of clarification before we start changing the rules. I understand that a semi-trailer, particularly in non-business hours, is able to park in a spot for up to one hour before police take any action. Do we have any... That, uh, thank you, Councillor Slay. The Engineering Services Manager... <clears throat> yes, that's correct. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Slay. Uh, further items, uh, we go to Councillor Smith. Before we start spending a heap of money that we don't really have, we're saying we're running a deficit budget, I think we should get some prices before we start changing the budget and saying, right, we got the, the top job. I don't like to see the daggy job, as some people call it daggy, but I think we need to look where we're spending our dollars. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Smith. And, and that's where I think that the recommendation from the committee on page 16 is uh, recommending to Council to seek costings on the low option designs for the northern and southern blocks and further that both blocks include soft landscaping and that council investigate options for pedestrian refuges. So, um, so in, in terms of the costings, that would be reflected if, well, on that, on that lower option, which um, certainly when you look at it, um, has more trees and perhaps is as more aesthetically pleasing. But again, uh, Councillor Winky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now we also need to keep in mind with, uh, with with putting more trees in is that semis do take a little bit of room up, but they certainly do need. And I second Councillor Reinhold's suggestion that we need to need parking for semis because it is quite popular down there that they can actually park there, grab their tucker, and get on back mm. on the road again. And mm. it's really, really uh, quite um, mm. quite a good spot for them to be doing so. So we've just got to be careful about that. And look, I want trees, but we've just got to be still careful mm. about how many trees we put in there. Mm. But I'm also conscious of what Councillor Judd was saying about our street lights as well. So mm. I think we just can't just sort of go back to 
this recommendation on its, on its own without sort of probably putting a few other extra things into it. So I'll be looking forward to what Councillor Judd might offer as a, uh, a motion for this, this, this uh, episode. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I tend to agree with um, a little bit more research and modelling on what could be done to have a bit more detail about before we scope out the costings, because I think it's you get more reliable costings when you have a bit more of an idea of what you want to price. So I think it's a fairly large investment to do this huge capital project on the Southern Block particularly, so I would be happy to scope out the works with a bit more detail based on this motion just to have a bit more visual idea of what we're actually getting a price on and if it's what we're after. So it, it's all planning is you get better results when you do good planning at the upfront. So I'd be happy to um, do a bit more scoping out before we go on to pricing. Thank you. Uh, the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I think this, the southern block in particular, is always going to look a bit different to the two main blocks because mm. it, it, it lacks the um, veranda, verandas that the, the two main blocks still have. So that, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to create the same sort of atmosphere. Uh, so I'm thinking you've got to perhaps compensate with that by, by that by having you know, perhaps more trees and so forth in it. Um, um, so uh, I think there needs to be, yeah, as been said, perhaps a bit more work done first. But um, yeah, to, to say that we want to have the southern block look the same as the two main blocks, I don't think that's really achievable. But there's mm. no reason why it can't still look, mm. yeah, you know, uh, presentable in its own right. So. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Other comments or? Well, we're dealing with the Assets and Operations Committee report. Councillor Judd. Well, I'll move, the, <coughs> move an amendment to the motion that, uh, that we uh, proceed with uh, getting the uh, seeing costings on the low option design for the Northern Block and that we um, go back and look at the two options for the sun, revisit the two options for the southern block and further uh, options, you know, with those parking and trees and street lightings on the on the southern block. Right, thank you. Have we captured that? But we will acknowledge uh, that we have the town planner that's uh, uh, the right hand of the acting general manager this evening. So we thank the town planner uh, for your assistance this evening. Yes, yeah, so we've captured the motion. And uh, is there a seconder? Councillor Reinhold has seconded that motion. Thank you. Now, a further discussion on that particular motion. I can, I can just read it, the motion back. Thank you, to Town Planner. Councillor Judd, um, that, that Council proceed with costings on the low cost option design for the northern block and revisit the design for the southern block to consider parking and trees. Right, thank you. So that's captured it. The mover and second are happy with uh, that. Thank you. Uh, discussion on that motion, the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so is that motion going to include the second part of the, the, the resolution in the papers that, that, that both blocks include? Soft landscaping and investment options of uh, pedestrian refuge. Or? So the mover and second are happy to add that to that motion. Thank you. This is what teamwork's all about, see? Pardon? Uh, right, so if we can have that and further that both blocks include soft landscaping and that council investigate options for pedestrian refuges. Council proceed with costings on option design for the northern block, design for southern blocks to consider parking and trees. Thank you. Councillor Judd. Just in the main motion there, they, uh, that include um, 
to consider parking street lights and trees in big place. Thank you. Okay, a mover and second are happy now with what's before us. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion on this motion, which uh, will, uh, if it is passed, obviously will supersede the committee resolution on page 16. So now further discussion. Uh, Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I, I'm not happy with um, Councillor Judd's proposal. I really I am not. Um, I think this has all been based around one particular business down there, which is successful, apparently, but businesses come and businesses go. So, I mean, we've got a, a heritage-listed temporary building office down there that's been there for quite some time. The, the pub across the road is under some sort of um, cloud, really, yeah. and um, the building on the corner is sold at no development that I can see of in the future. So it just doesn't sit comfortable <laughs> with me at the moment, spending money, you know. I mean, as Councillor Smith said, we've got a deficit budget at the moment. So, mm. yeah, anyway, that's what I've got to say anyway. No, thank you, Councillor. I think that the point is certainly well made in relation to uh, the budget issue, and I think that's what the committee uh, certainly had uh, in mind uh, as well in, in coming to the recommendation or the initial recommendation um, that that is a fact and that is a reality uh, that there are budgetary restraints um, so therefore we can't <laughs> do what we'd probably love to do if, if money was uh, plentiful however um, yeah certainly the committee felt at the time that that low cost uh, option certainly with the you know, the, the, the trees and those other um, uh, soft landscaping and so on would uh, just enhance uh, that block at a, a more affordable level. But Costings was always going to come back anyway for the council of the day, whether it's this current council or, or uh, the next council of Timor Shire uh, to, to consider. Um, but uh, I, your point is, is well made, Council Oliver. Thank you. Can, uh, if you'd like to speak, can you press your buttons, please? Yeah, <laughs> Councillor Smith, thank you. Yeah, I think we've got to look at the options and get a and know what we're paying for. It's no good of saying, right, we want that option. We don't even know what it's going to cost. You know, as and I just think we need to look at the options, then come back and say, right, that one we can't afford. That one we can't afford. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Smith. Well, councillors, uh, there is a motion before us that Councillor Judd and Councillor Reinhold have moved that says uh, that uh, in response to report REP21-490, council proceed with costings on low cost option design for the northern block and revisit design for the southern block to consider parking, street lights and trees. And further that both blocks include soft landscaping and that council investigate options for pedestrian refuges. So there being no further discussion, I'm going to... I'm going to... Go on. Councillor Judd, by the skin of your teeth. Oh, I don't, just a comment referring uh, back on uh, Councillor Oliver's remarks. Uh, Councillor Oliver seems to have a pessimistic view of what might happen down there. I have an optimistic view and I think... Uh, I think, you know, if we do the right thing and encourage people, I think you might be amazed what could happen in that block. Thank you, Councillor Judd. I, I don't think, uh, I don't think Councillor Oliver meant, uh, uh, meant in terms of the, the pessimistic side. I think it's just reflecting what we're looking at, uh, at currently and also in light of the budget situation. But certainly, uh, I think all of us in this chamber uh, have a tremendous sense of optimism about tomorrow's Shire's present and future. But uh, thank you, Councillor Judd, and that will wind up debate on this important uh, motion that's before you. Uh, so I'm going to put the motion to you now. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Uh, so those uh, that are voting against, Councillor Smith, Councillor Oliver, so I declare the motion carried. Thank you. Just remember, 
councillors, that um, that motion being passed, that that will come back to the council of the day and then they can debate it further. Uh, so we're, you know, we're a journey away yet, but uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, councillors, a remainder of the Assets and Operations Committee report and its recommendations, please. Someone prepared to move. Councillor Winky, thank you. thank you. Seconded the Deputy Mayor. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I'll declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, we now proceed to, would you believe, page 68, the, S, uh, the Economic Development and Visitations Committee report. And I'm the chairman of that committee. Is someone prepared to move that that report be received? Thank you. Councillor Winky, Councillor Smith moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. On the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, do you have any items there in the economic development <coughs> paper? Certainly on page 70, the temporary worker accommodation. It's um, obviously, a, well, an exciting issue to have, and I acknowledge the presence of our economic development manager in the chamber uh, this afternoon. Uh, there's no, uh, the manager, if you can, if you wish to speak, if you can come up to the lectern and press the button. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to advise council that I've um, met with uh, an additional um, uh, proponent of, of, sorry, consultant who might be able to add some, um, uh, another lens that we can, can look at with um, our short-term housing needs for development such as inland rail and um, tie those in with longer middle-term and longer-term housing needs that we might have in our community. So ways to leverage the temporary, what might be temporary housing solutions to provide um, housing options for other people within the committee or other organisations in the community beyond that um, initial 18-month period. So I will furnish um, a report to Council uh, in due course when um, those discussions um, you know, bear a, bit, a few more fruits, but I just wanted to update Council to let them know that those discussions have been taking place. No, thank you, Mr Manager, for that important, the very important update. Uh, Councillors, if there's no further comments or questions, would, would uh, someone be prepared to move the adoption of the... Uh, of the Economic Development and Visitations Committee report and its recommendations. Councillor McLaren, thank you. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, uh, Mr Manager, you need to a chair. <laughs> I think uh, you should go and fetch one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, councillors, let's go to page 75. The delegates' reports. Do we have delegates' reports from councillors, please? The Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, last, um, last Wednesday, the Director of Environmental Services himself um, went to Sydney to meet with the uh, uh, Minister Pavey regarding uh, social housing and, and so forth. Um, we, uh, and our member of the Commander uh, Steph Cook was also in attendance. Uh, very good meeting, we were well heard. And there's also uh, Wendy Milton from um, Argyle Housing was there too. Um, yes. Uh, the minister was right behind uh, us. Um, she's going to uh, help us in any way they can with um, uh, the, when, with um, the um, Argyle housing project and and so forth. Um, there's a few things that probably should come up in confidential. I think more detail, so it includes people. So um, I'll perhaps update it a bit more in in confidential, but. Um, on that same trip on the way down, we did have a, a, a separate to this. We had a conversation with um, Finn Martin from LLS about the um, 
the uh, trapping stock reserves and their, mm. their proposal. Um, uh, uh, pretty much got a similar, similar uh, conversation to what we did have, but is, we've invited him to uh, address the assertions op, op meeting in July. So um, that will give him a chance to yeah, put a few more details in front of us and ask some more questions on mm. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Mayor, and we thank you and the Director of Environmental Services for representing Tamora Shire at that meeting. Uh, the Acting General Manager and I are very grateful that you uh, flew the flag for us, uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, Councillors, other further delegates' reports? Councillor Winky. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yes, I was, I was representing Council at the uh, Inland Rail Conference on the 25th to 27th of May at Albury Wodonga. Um, it was a very full-on conference. Uh, there were some uh, 390 registered um, mm. people attended, uh, which was a full house for them. And uh, they had a waiting list of even wow. for people if there was cancellations to go on it as well. Uh, so it was very full-on. Uh, the uh, Both the mayors of um, Wodonga and Albury um, went out of their way to make us very, very welcome. Yeah. And um, certainly, I've you've, you've got a report in the paper so mm. that you can read that. And if, if anyone's got any questions, they can certainly ask me. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Council Winky. And Council, thanks you for uh, making the time and effort to go to that, uh, that important uh, conference. Uh, Council Winky? If, if I might just add, too, thank yeah. you very much to, uh, to Anne, too, for uh, organising my accommodation and. Uh, entrance to the conference down there and she did well. It was five minute walk or less to uh, from the accommodation to the conference. It was great. You could leave the car park where it was and, and forget about it. And, uh, <laughs> it was great. So it was, uh, yeah, well done. But they had a, yeah, look, look great, great facilities down there at the uh, conference centre in Albury. Mm. It's a great setup and uh, mm. certainly uh, covered this amount of people. It was full, but mm. they did it with ease, yeah. Mm. Thank you, Mr. No, that's great. Thanks. Again, Councillor Winky, because uh, again, we know all of us in this chamber uh, are very, very busy, but um, we do thank you uh, for making time to, to fly the flag, um, because obviously the, the conference itself is important, but also the networking, we can't uh, underestimate the value of that as well. And thank you for the report as well. Uh, Councillor Slay, delegates reports. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on Friday the 11th, uh, last week, uh, I had the opportunity of attending the round table with principals. This has become a very useful annual event mm. with the leaders of the five local schools. But I'd have to say that uh, on this occasion it excelled itself. It excelled our dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, the acting general manager was there, as was the youth officer. And as was somebody else whose name I forget. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember who it was. My apologies about that. But the, um, the principal certainly raised with us quite a number of issues. The questions were, what can the council do to make easier the work, the work of the um, schools? And as I said, ideas were forthcoming. They were very, very useful. An example, I'm not going through the whole meeting, but an example was uh, the question of recycling in the area park. And uh, why is there no recycling facility available? It was very useful, and for the new principal of Area Park, or the acting principal of Area Park, um, our advice to him was to uh, consult the local councillor. And I believe that um, that contact has been initiated, uh, which is all very useful. But the main point, I think, that came out of the meeting, as far as I was concerned, was the openness that is existing between these very very influential five people uh, from the five schools and the council, and the closer the relationship is, the more personal context they are able to develop, the better the communication will be so that we will be able to take part in supporting and encouraging the work of our local schools. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Slay. And I think the other one that you forgot that was there was actually me. But I'm easily, I'm easily forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> but Councillor oh, Slay, right. you are quite right. It was an excellent session, and uh, and, and for everyone uh, to give up their time was certainly um, 
uh, most appreciate and I commend Council for continuing to, uh, to host this annual uh, round table and, uh, and certainly in your role, Councillor Slays, our Youth Advisory Committee Chairman, uh, you uh, never miss them. So we do thank you so much for that. Uh, and, uh, and as uh, a further extension of that meeting, we actually have organised uh, a meeting with uh, the Tamora High School, St Anne's, and uh, the Agriculture Innovation Centre and FarmLink to see what other ventures uh, can be done. Those two schools seem particularly keen to see if they can enhance uh, their uh, agricultural involvement. So, so that's also a positive result, potentially anyway, uh, that'll come out of, uh, of that particular round table. So thank you, Councillor Slay, for reflecting on that. Uh, further delegates' reports? Uh, just to let you know, Councillors, we have a re-rock a meeting of both boards, um, uh, Reroc and Riverina JO, will be uh, tomorrow week, 25th of June, uh, at the Rules Club in Wagga Wagga. And uh, that uh, obviously will be when uh, Dr McGurr will be uh, fronting uh, the board to discuss uh, all things uh, <laughs> cost shifting, etc. Uh, just further, I did send out... Um, uh, a note in relation to some of the main items of the Country Mayors Association meeting recently that the Acting General Manager and I attended in Sydney. But one of the main things that, uh, that uh, we thought, besides obviously the emergency services levy saga, etc., was uh, the resolution passed by Country Mayors uh, in relation to daylight savings. Now, I know there are those that uh, love it and there are those that uh, do not, but uh, all country mayors uh, were suggesting is that, um, that it be reduced back to what it was prior to the 2000 Sydney Olympics. So if those might remember that it was extended because of those Olympics and, uh, and they just want it reduced back, which uh, from memory was uh, uh, early first November. early uh, so November, finish at the end of February. So uh, that's something that... Uh, uh, just watch this space, but I, I'm just not sure <laughs> what the government will do in that space. But other than that, is there any further delegates' reports? If not, let's go to page 76, the Mayor's report for the month of May. And there's a recommendation on page 79 that Council notes the Mayor's report. Councillor Reinhold, thank you. Councillor Winky. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, councillors, over to page 80. Could I have a motion receiving staff reports, please? Councillor Smith, Councillor Oliver, moved and seconded. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Let's go to page 81, the General Manager's Report, 10.1, our Acting General Manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, calendar of events for councillors to note. Thank you. Uh, councillors, there's a recommendation there that we note the report. Councillor Oliver, you'll move that way. Councillor Winky, thank you. Moved and seconded. Is further discussion? If not... I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Yeah. You haven't been real busy, Madam <laughs> Acting General Manager. <laughs> so nothing further? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. No, thank you. Uh, Council, let's go over to page 82, uh, the Engineering Services Department report, 11.1, .1, Fixing Local Roads Program Round 3, the, the manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, so this program was announced uh, at the Local Roads Congress on the uh, 7th of June. Um, there's only a really short window. We've got to have applications in by the you know, 5th of July and there's a, there's a fair bit of work to do um, in um, submitting these applications. Uh, what I'm proposing is that we resubmit some of our unsuccessful applications from last round, um, uh, plus we add um, a, a project that uh, is around uh, sealing of some unsealed uh, urban roads that Council recently uh, prioritised and put in the Forward Capital Works Program. Um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr Manager. Does, uh, 
do you envisage that any of these um, have an effect on council's budget? I knew you were going to ask that. Uh, now listen, I, you know, um, you know, I think we wait and see as to what's successful to determine if there is any impact. But you know, my view would be that there is not. I think that we would use our existing, um, you know, funds that we've already got committed to. You know, we'd leverage them funds to to do these works. Um, it'll just depend on what project got up. But you know, say, for instance, the rural road resheets council's got two hundred and fifty thousand allocated to. Um, one of a, a particular road that we'll include in the application that'll cover the 25% for the remainder. So, um, yeah, I think we just watch this space, but at this stage, I'd say no. Thank you. Remember that. <laughs> Councillor Judd. Uh, just a question to the manager, engineering manager. The uh, four items mentioned, are they in the priority order or just separate applications or what? Thank you. The manager. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, no, they're not in any particular order, uh, but we do have to, uh, in the application process, we have to um, uh, give priority. Um, in the past, we normally give the highest value project the highest priority, um, but, uh, yeah, that's not uh, how that's been done. I, you know, to be honest, I think uh, if we looked at um, that, the only two I'd switch would be the third and fourth. They'd probably switch around and the rest, that would probably probably the order. So the manager's suggesting to council that the order be as is, except uh, the bottom two be reversed. So the 380 would become number three, yeah. and 400 number four. And that, that's your advice to council? Correct. Yeah, thank you. The Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. <coughs> yeah, just the, the uh, second, third and fourth dot point, I thought it might be worth, in the application, make be worth mentioning that uh, we're, we're participating in the um, uh, the uh, okay. pilot scheme for the uh, off, off uh, heavy vehicles. Yeah, no, Thank definitely. You, the manager. Yeah, hundred percent. We'll definitely do that. Thank you very much. Well, councillors, there's a recommendation there that we endorse the proposed projects, with the recommendation being that the 1.2 million, or the first dot point's number one, the second dot point is number two, uh, the fourth dot point, 380,000 from Andamar be number three, and 400 from Maroor Creek be number four. Councillor Judd. <coughs> I was going to make more uh, comments on the uh, Roads Congress a report later in the meeting, but uh, just on this item, when the Minister announced the uh, opening of round three at the conference the other day, uh, one of the conditions of you said that in rounds one and two, every council in New South Wales that had, had applied correctly had got money. But in round three, priority will be given to councils who have acquitted the, those rounds one and two, uh, done properly. And um, I must congratulate our engineering services uh, department because we've done very well in rounds one and two, and I'm very confident that will acquit very well, go very well in round three because of mm. our actions in round one and two. Mm. And congratulations to the engineering department on the, on the effort in, the, in those rounds. Thank you, Councillor Judd, and I think the Chamber would warmly endorse uh, your <coughs> sentiments. So there is a bouquet, Mr Manager. Don't say you don't get any. <laughs> now, a well-earned one. Thank you, Councillor Judd. Uh, Councillors, there is a recommendation there before you that we endorse the projects and ranked uh, as, can we swap those? Oh, you're being tricky. All right, so just appearing on the screen. In the following order, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, councillors, you see there on your screen a recommendation if someone is prepared to move that direction. Councillor Judd, Councillor Mac, uh, Councillor <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> uh, moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 
to the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, councillors, let's now proceed over to page 97, 11.2, the old Cootamundra Road Speed Zone Review. The manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, so, councils received a uh, request uh, regarding um, a potential speed zone review of the old Cootamundra Road. The request basically goes into um, the fact that we've got two major grain terminals at that road, um, which, you know, experience large volumes of heavy vehicle traffic turning in and out. Um, and, you know, I guess the, the correspondent cited that, you know, the speed zone's quite close to them and it wouldn't be hard to, to you know, um, consider shifting it out a little bit. Uh, I've, I've tried to bring this to council. Normally this would probably go to the traffic committee meeting, um, but, you know, I, just, I guess just, um, you know, with in mind of trying to get a result before the harvest, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to, you know, if council's of the mind to, you know, proceed with it, I'd like to send it to RMS and then take the results back to the committee, um, as opposed to go to the committee, then go to RMS and then come back to council. Thank you. Does the engineer have any professional advice to council before or not? Uh, to be honest, not particularly. The only thing I'd say is that you know, speed zones aren't within our control and um, you know, I guess acceding to this request and going down the speed zone review path, you might find that we get an outcome that council don't necessarily agree with, however won't have any say other than to lobby. Um, so yeah, just need to make the decision in mind that um, you know, if it goes down the review path, um, you might end up with a, a speed zone that doesn't necessarily reflect the views of council and you won't, won't be able to change it. No, thank you very much. So councillors, you've read the report, you've heard from uh, the manager of engineering services. I'll now go to the deputy mayor. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I'm not particularly happy to see anything happen here. I, I, I realise that during harvest peak period harvest is um, is very busy out there. However, that can be covered by temporary silage, which is signage, which is done uh, at other sites and has been done out there too. Um, my concern is if it, it come back to 80 k or something, it wouldn't be so bad. But I'm concerned that. It, they might shift the 50k sign out the other side of the uh, of the of the, the grain corp site, and that is a long way in at 50k's in other times of year when there's no heavy vehicles there. So personally, I'd rather see, I'd like to see it stay the way it is, unless we could have some guarantee that um, yeah, it would be 80k's or something like that. But I'm I'm, mm. I'm concerned it may not be. It may end up. Yeah, as I said, come back to 50 k's. Um, yeah, so I, I personally like to see it um, stay as is. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I now go to Councillor McLaren. I agree that if we start meddling, then who knows what they'll end up doing. Were you going to recommend 80 kilometres an hour as the zone speed limit? The manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, listen. I think the request has merit and, you know, I think um, they suggested, you know, 70 k's, uh, which is consistent with the approaches to Tamora. I guess the risk is it seems like transport um, are, you know, moving away from or discourage transitional zones and we've seen that at Springdale, we've seen it at Harden. Um, and, yeah, so potentially if you go down that path and you ask for a speed zone re review, they might... Uh, overlook the 70 or 80 option and, and you know, look to extend the 50, which would be consistent to, with what's been happening. However, I guess we could try and get some informal advice on that. I, I'm pretty open, to be honest, Council's view. I'm not overly concerned with what happens there. I, you know, there is an absolute statewide push for lower speeds because of road trauma and, you know, um, severity of crashes and this sort of thing. Um, I think it's only a matter of time we're going to start seeing more and more speeds and reviews and lower speeds. Um, but yeah, um, no view, no preference. Thank you. Uh, Council Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I agree with the Deputy Mayor. I think it should be best left alone. I think if it goes to RMS, there's going to be people there making decisions that have no idea what's involved in the harvest and, 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 uh, and the, the traffic um, 
I mean, if it's going to be a 50 from out the other side of the sub, it's going to be a long journey in, and, and I fear that's what's going to happen if these people get to make the decision. So I'd just as soon as see it stay the way it is. That's my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Uh, well, I'll go to Councillor McLaren. Uh, question to the manager. Are there other ways of um, alerting traffic along that section during harvest periods, lights, signs, for harvest traffic movements? The manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, as Councillor Sinclair said, um, yeah, in the past, BFB have taken it on their, you know, their own um, responsibility to put um, verbal message boards um, at the JV site. Um, you know, that exact same thing could be done. I don't know that there's too much else outside of that, but, you know, I guess, you know, where it gets complicated is, you know, whose responsibility is it? Is it, is it our responsibility to have a safe speed there? Is it the, is it the grain operator's responsibility? If you've got two receival sites close together, how's that going to work? Uh, to be honest, it's probably our responsibility. Um, but, um, yeah, I know it's just a, it's something that council need to consider the risk and act appropriately, I suppose. Thank you. The Deputy Mayor. <laughs> just further on for that, is it, is it possible then for, yeah, you know, council put up permanent signs but have a, a fold-down sign so that the, during harvest they can, the, you know, the, just folds down and, the, you know, the same warning as... Um, heavy vehicles turning or, or something like that. Thank you. The manager? Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, I think so. An another compromise could be, I'm not sure if this is commonly done, but you know, say, for instance, when they do, um, you know, like inspection bays and that on uh, roads, you can actually make it a, a temporary work site and you could... So, yeah, we could potentially put speed signs up there and make it a work site for the duration of harvest and then it goes back to its regular speed. Uh, I reckon that would be an option worth exploring. I've seen it done on the Newell Highway and other places where they're, where they're pulling up trucks and different things. Thank you. So, councillors, we need to uh, move forward on, on this one. Councillor Winky. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I, I, would another option be, because it's, it's not a state road, is the Alcuda road, it's a local road. Um, could we just put a trucks turning ahead warning sign prior to it? Thank you, the manager. Ah, uh, yep, that's possible. Okay, councillors, we're, we're in your hands, the Deputy Mayor. Uh, so now I'd like to move that council look, at, look into options as far as signposting of heavy vehicles on the Alcuta Motor Road during harvest. I don't know, so you're moving that way. Thank you. Second to Councillor Smith. Thank you, move and second is our discussion. Mr Deputy Mayor, are you... Oh, oh. That's right, thank you. No further discussion. And that, uh, the engineer is, uh, I think that's a, a workable uh, motion. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those without opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, nothing uh, further from the engineer of an urgent late nature, the manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. The only item, uh, I think I had two, but I can't remember the first one. But one item is is that uh, last time I got an email that uh, we got included in the extension to the Natural Disaster Declaration, so um, that will mean that uh, we're eligible to claim um, for some road damage. It's probably uh, somewhere between sort of four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars worth of damage there that we'll be trying to claim. Uh, so that's a good thing. I, mm. I was actually probably thinking that wouldn't happen, and did so. Mm. Now that's that's great news, Mr. Manager, and uh, we thank you for that advice. Uh, Councillors, let's go to page ninety-eight, the Environmental Services Department report, our twelve point one. The uh, Tamora Shire Sports Grounds and Parks Crown Reserve Plan of Management, the Director. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, this is the last of our Crown, Ran, Crown Land Reserve um, reports and our uh, town plan will be excited that we finally got a submission. Um, she talks about the, um, the submission. Uh, it's, a, it's a classification issue um, that was deemed sort of inconsequential and it's recommended the... Uh, management plan be adopted as exhibited. Thank you, Mr. Director. 
Uh, councillors, you have a recommendation at the bottom of page 99 for you to consider. Councillor Winky. Yeah, Mr Mayor, I move the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Winky has moved the recommendation. Is there a second to Councillor Reinhold? Thank you. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If there's no further discussion, I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, we proceed over to page 132, 12.2, the draft external grant funding policy. The director. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I'm not sure how this ends up in uh, my department's uh, portfolio, but our town plan is an excellent policy writer, and um, I'd ask her to speak on this. Thank you, Mr Director. So, the defer to the town planner. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, so, this is um, a policy that um, yeah, Council has uh, nominated as a task that um, was necessary in order to improve transparency. Um, so this will set out the procedures um, of the way that Council will apply for grants into the future um, so that Council is prepared for that and any budgetary implications of that. Thank you very much, Madam Town Planner. Just a, a question. The, so if an organisation applies for a grant, so say this policy is adopted and, and well done on uh, this draft policy, a very important one, if an organisation applies for a grant uh, without council's knowledge for a council-owned facility, what, what, with this policy assuming that this is uh, adopted and in place, what are the, the penalties, if any, that uh, I can't see anything articulated, I suppose, in, the, uh, in the policy and wondering whether we should have something around, around that. Thank you, Town Planner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, yeah, so I agree that hasn't been uh, articulated explicitly. Um, we will try to create awareness of this policy amongst the community, and we'd always encourage that if um, community groups are applying for grants that involve um, council assets, they should always come and talk to us mm. um, prior to applying. Mm. Um, I would be surprised if they they didn't come and talk to us um, because often they need a letter of support from council anyway. Um, but if our group did um, apply for funding without um, council's involvement and it did um, obviously have implications as for a council asset, we would need to report that information to council and, um, and let council make that um, decision about whether they um, support the work to, uh, going ahead, but I can um, add some additional um, points into the policy um, as um, part of the public exhibition process because we are going to put this on exhibition. Mm. So I'm happy to take that on board as a submission um, straight away, and we can um, bring that back to council um, in an amended version. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. And as you say, it's about education and awareness for you know, all community groups, sporting, uh, uh, etc. cetera, um, and, and we'll work hard in that space, that's for sure. Uh, I go to Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a point of clarification, if I could. Um, under point one, it talks about um, formal council resolution required prior to grant funding being applied for for amounts over 50,000. So what page, sorry, Councillor uh, McLaren? Page 136. Ah, yes, thank you. Bottom. Uh, that are not included in the delivery or operational plan. Um, and then over in number three, in the assessment process, it talks about, it doesn't mention anything about the delivery or operational plan. It talks about, does the grant align with our council strategic plan? And I just wondered which criteria will be used to assess whether the grant is applied for. Is it is it to do with the community strategic plan objectives or is it if it's in the delivery program that we've set out as an item to be pursued. Thank you very much, Councillor McLaren, the town planner. Uh, sorry, oh, Councillor Judd, thank you, the town planner. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, so I, I do consider um, both of those plans do have weight. Um, so if we have got an item, uh, 
or project that council's identified in the delivery plan that that is quite significant because council has um, received some detail about that project um, in the community strategic plan it it might not be uh, quite as as detailed it might be a, perhaps a, a slightly more general objective um, but I, I'm happy to um, add some additional content of, about that um, as part of um, the submission process and bring that back to council in a uh, future version of the draft policy. Thanks very much. Councillor McLaren. Yes, I think it would be appropriate to have um, things that have come before council and formally included in our delivery plan um, to be the criteria. Um, but I guess anything under 50,000, if it aligns with our community strategic plan, could and the council of the day believe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I think it should be within the delivery program, especially if it's over 50,000. We need to have some yeah. knowledge and authorisation of that project. Mm. Um, that's just my opinion. Thank you. No, thank you, Councillor McLaren. I, I go to Councillor Judd. Thanks, Mr Mayor. The, um, you mentioned before about the need for community to be uh, let council know if applying for grants on council land. I think it's very important they let council be involved in uh, getting grants on non-council on non land too because that they get their project listed in the community strategic plan because um, that helps a lot when you're applying for a grant. That, that's, you can say it's been mentioned in mm -hmm. council's strategic plan, even though it might be nothing to do with it. I'd probably give an example of, say, the Area Park Men's Shed applying for the grant that's not on you know, council land, you know, so... It's most important that they, their aims and objectives, you know, what they want to do, be uh, recorded. Mm. Uh, thank you, Councillor Judd. I think that's a good point. The town planner uh, will note that. Thank you. Uh, so, councillors, you have the uh, you have the recommendation there on page 132 with those additional uh, comments included, as uh, the town planner has noted. And that public exhibition period will be 28 days. Yep, thank you. So, is someone prepared to move the recommendation? Was there an alternative? Councillor McLaren, you're moving that. Councillor Reinhold moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. We clear the motion carried. And we thank the uh, town planner and our strategic projects officer uh, for her uh, efforts in drafting uh, that initial policy. Thank you. Uh, councillors, let's now proceed to page 139, 12.3, still in the Department of Environmental Services report, uh, the Rural Museum, Tem FM, the director. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, this has come back to council. Uh, it appears that the uh, Tomorrow Rural Museum is not a a big fan of the general manager's temporary accessible toilet block. We thought um, it was a winner. <laughs> and, and to be fair, that it, they have concerns about where it had to be located to fit it in. Uh, they've come back with a, another idea. Um, it's, it's probably a longer term solution and involves them uh, contributing um, some money and also sourcing other funds uh, and perhaps also from uh, Tem FM as well. Uh, council had sort of said they were prepared to contribute 5k towards the extension of the sewer um, from the sewer fund to uh, facilitate the temporary toilet accommodation um, and they're hopeful that that offer still is on the table so for council's decision. Thank you Mr Director. Uh, we have Councillor Smith with his button on. Councillor Smith. Uh, yes I would like to move the recommendation thank you. Right, so you <laughs> get right into it. You'll move the recommendation on the page uh, 139, which for those listening, it is uh, uh, that council offer no objection to the construction of a permanent accessible uh, toilet adjacent to the TEM -M FM studio and confirm a $5,000 contribution towards the cost of extending the sewer to, the, uh, to service the building. So you're moving that way. Second, uh, thank, uh, se second to Councillor Oliver, thank you. Discussion, I go to Councillor Winky. 
Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> sorry, I've got to look at the lights. Yeah. Councillor, uh, the uh, the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I actually think this is pretty, pretty much a win-win situation. Um, was your, we're, we're going to cost uh, council you know, a similar sort of money, I, I think, to put the uh, temporary toilet set up there anyway. So mm -hmm. I think that this be similar sort of money to to go towards something that's permanent, and um, so to have the um, Royal Museum and TFM to uh, put a bit of money into is so mm -hmm. going to. Yeah, suit everybody, I think, so I think it's a good idea. Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor. I think you're right. It's great to see them uh, wanting to cough up. I'll go to Councillor Winky. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd, I'd still like to see this uh, toilet actually be just accessible from internally from from, from the radio station. Um, I think for safety reasons and also for, for weather conditions, you know, it's still going to be have to go outside to access it uh, if the way it was going to be built with accessibility for... Mm. Uh, the open days and some of the staff out there that well some of the workers that work out there reckon they don't need another toilet mm -hmm. um, and this way it would be just accessible for TEM they would wholly and solely look after it clean it and keep it tidy mm -hmm. and and uh, there's a window there at the end that they feel that they could be uh, utilized into a doorway and just have it just from an internal access just for TEM staff mm -hmm. thank you Councillor Wink I must admit I had heard those comments as well that yeah, that there was uh, uh, those that shared those views. Uh, the director, do you have a response to Councillor Winky's comments? Please. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no details have been designed yet. However, I did think that it was a priority from the Rural Museum to have access to it as well on their open days. So you could have both a, a, a you know sliding door that leads from the Tem FM, and you know a, a, an operable, accessible door with a ramp from the external elevations as well so it was proposed to have both thank you mr director uh, the, dep the, the, dep <laughs> the deputy mayor yeah i tend to agree with i think if, if they just want it for themselves well they can pay for a lot um, I, I think on open days and so forth or when there's bus loads that come through i, I think it's necessary to have that toilet there so yeah i think it needs to be they yeah, accessible on um, busy days to the real museum as well as TFM. Thank you. I go now to Councillor Smith. The only problem I see with that, with the present situation with this COVID thing about and people travelling through, mm. it could become a problem with the COVID situation. You know, if it's, I know we haven't had it, but you just don't know when you're going to get it. And I would like to see that if they put a toilet there and they're going to put money into it and they're going to clean it, I think it should be theirs. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Smith. Well, councillors, we have um, a motion before you, which is the motion on page 139. <coughs> Pardon me, that Councillor Smith and Councillor Oliver has moved. Uh, that council offer no objection to the construction of a permanent accessible toilet adjacent to TEM FM studio and confirm a $5,000 contribution towards the cost of extending the sewer to service the building. There's no further discussion. I will put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To, to the contrary, no. no. Uh, I'll, I'll actually ask again, Councillor, this time I'd ask you to raise your hands. All those of that opinion in support of the motion, please raise your hands. Thank you. All those opposed, I declare the motion carried. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Winky, Councillor Slay, you like your uh, vote recorded against? Thank you. Duly noted. Thank you very much. Now, Councillors, let's go over to page 142, 12.4, the proposed dual occupancy at 159 Crowley Street tomorrow. The Director. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, we have an application for a dual occupancy at uh, 159 Crowley Street. It's an attempt to address some of the short-term accommodation shortages that are uh, occurring at the moment. Uh, our town plan has done a planning report, which is attached. Um, 
it seems to be they're a bit short on meeting the requirement for the DCP requirement for private open space, which requires a private open space of minimum 45 square metres usable, open private, um, uh, open space per dwelling, um, and the application is uh, deficient in that area and requires a special resolution of council to, uh, to be adopted. Thank you, Mr. Director, and of course, uh, I, I would think that council, we have to record the votes. Uh, thank you. I go to the Deputy Mayor. Yes, the Mayor, look, well, initial thoughts was, no, was probably not right, but then, uh, you know, if this was in um, you know, Sydney or even, you know, some of the regional cities and so forth, it probably wouldn't be an issue because, you know, you see houses normally getting built on top of each other in very limited um, outdoor areas. So, I, I, yeah, anyone who buying or moving in here knows what they're going into um, mm -hmm. for a start. So I, yeah, I don't see any really great problem with it uh, mm -hmm. myself. So. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Other councillors have any other comments? Uh, Councillor Winky. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I, I'm in, in agreement with uh, with the Deputy Mayor. I think that you know we're we're getting to the stage now. We're looking for more accommodation, mm. um, and you know there's a lot of uh, spare space in around mm. the back of homes and whatnot in, in tomorrow. And I think this might be a, a sort of a way forward for some other people to sort of sort of pick up on this and mm. and run with it as well and get, get us some extra accommodation. Mm. No, thanks, Councillor Winky. That's a good point. A good point. Well. Uh, we go to Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to clarify on the map in the paper pages, uh, the private space that you've got allocated to them is between the gate, the, those red lines that designate the gate heading back towards the dri driveway. Is that the public, the private space that's allocated to them, or so the director, I'm just trying to work out how much space they've got? Thank you, the director. It would be away from the lane in front of that gate, so you, where you've got, you can see the the power pole, and the and the that looks like a closed line. Um, that would be unit one's private open space, and the private open space for the other unit would be from the gate, right on the, towards the back lane, all the way around to the the front of the unit. So it, it's just efficient in the 45 square metres. There is some private open space, but the applicant is arguing that the people who are living there, you know workers, that sort of thing, aren't after yards necessarily. That They just want to, somewhere to live while they work in town. Thank you. Councillor McLaren. No, thank you. Uh, Councillors, there is a recommendation at the bottom of page 145 uh, from uh, the Director and the Town Planner that approval be granted to Mr. and Mrs. Gillard for the construction of two one-bedroom units at 159 Crowley Street tomorrow, subject to conditions as listed. Uh, who's I've got two greenies? Oh, sorry, Councillor Smith. Yep, I beg your move, pardon. Move the recommendation. <laughs> uh, thank you, So Councillor Smith. You're moving the recommendations. There a second at Councillor McLaren. No, no to comment. Thank you. Second to Councillor Winky. Thank you. Discussion. Councillor McLaren. Um, just a question. You know the laneway that comes down on the boundary of the fence to get to the back? The grey pathway from the front, um, from Crowley Street, that goes down beside the house. So that's the entranceway to the back area. Can you make that come 90 degrees halfway along to sort of make that access the, the one side and then the other side, so you can, can have the private space for two of them, or is that too inconvenient? Thank you, the director. <coughs> if I understand you correctly, uh, Councillor McLaren, I think you're back to front. That path that is heading off is towards Crowley Street, not the back lane. So the back lane is at the bottom of the page. Is that are we on the same page? So is there access down that pathway from Crowley Street to the units? Yes. Walking access, yeah. Yeah, walking access, that's right. Yeah. So I was suggesting that it turn 90 degrees where those trees are and the access to the to Unit 1 be halfway along that fence line with a dividing fence to give it private access separate to the Unit 2, if you know what I mean. So that way you could divide it and have <coughs> private access yeah, if you just went down along and they went in that way and they went in straight. 
Okay, the director? That could be an option. Um, it's, they're still deficient in the 45 square metre, so it still requires a council resolution. We, we could sort of bring that up with the applicant and suggest that, but the, uh, I think the principle is whether we ha we're happy with the development mm. and we're happy to um, waive the requirement for 45 square metres private open space. Thank you. Yeah, I'd be happy with that as long as we can maximise that private space and maybe accommodate it. Thank you. Well, councillors, we have a motion from councillors Smith and councillor Winky that we adopt the recommendation on page 145. There's no further discussion. I will ask you, uh, all those of that opinion, please raise your hand. Uh, so that motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. So that uh, obviously is recorded as a planning decision. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, let's go over to page 146, 12.5. Proposed steel framed shed at One Leary Place, Tamora. And I defer to the director. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, this is the application that was the subject of the items in the uh, public forum. Um, on first uh, viewing, this would appear to be a fairly straightforward application with a, a steel frame shed of similar size, scale and location and colour as to many other sheds in the, the uh, estate. Um, I think the bone of contention has been the secondary access from Currajong Street. Um, Currajong Street is a, a local road. Um, and it has been upgraded by the, um, the neighbour back in 2008 as a part of development condition for the uh, construction of a dwelling. Um, that was finalised in 2011. Um, basically, it's a, because it's a local road, access is generally available to all. Um, there are issues that, uh, in relation to uh, the dust and the drainage. Um, if those issues can be successfully overcome, I don't think there's any grounds that we can refuse the application. Um, if the driveway was put in by a uh, accredited council contractor and the driveway is uh, constructed of the same process as using top quality gravel, I think those uh, issues can be ameliorated and the recommendation is that the um, application be approved with conditions. Thank you, Mr. Director. So, councillors, as the Director pointed out, we did hear from uh, Mr. Burke and Mr. Scott in the public forum, uh, which it's uh, uh, great to, to have that uh, extra information to council to draw from uh, when determining uh, these sorts of decisions. So I go to Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question for the Director. Um, What's the due process for a development application? Is it a, a, a regulated two-week response time for submissions to a DA when neighbours are advised? And do you feel that um, due process is being followed by council to justify the decision? Thank you. I go to the director. Yep, uh, 10 days is the standard. We allow two days for the post. Um, we actually, with this application, um, put it on public exhibition twice. So it was on public exhibition from March to, uh, sorry, the 25th of March to the 8th of April. Um, oh. It was pointed out the site plan was deficient in information. Um, so to cover ourselves, we did put it on public exhibition again in uh, May and, and finished on the 7th of June. So I'm very confident that, that um, due process has been followed um, and above and beyond, to be honest. Thank you. That's important information for Council, so thank you for, for that. Uh, further discussion or comments? Councillor Slay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, we heard Mr Scott this afternoon saying that he felt it would be appropriate to be given some more time to look at the, some certain details about this um, whole exercise. And I think it might be worth explaining what this extra business about time is 
uh, the manager, uh, the director, sorry, has already pointed out that there seems to have been a lot of time. When the when Mr. Scott was given the revised version on the 18th of May, it was letterbox at his place. Um, he asked for some outside people to be able to give him some information, uh, a town planner from outside the town, and he was also getting legal advice. Now, the un here's where the question of time becomes a very real issue, I think. Uh, you go to a solicitor, with due respect to all solicitors, and you say, I want to get some information, please. I, is this an adequate uh, time lapse in this case? And the answer from most solicitors will be, look, you know, I'll get it to you as fast as I can, uh, but I'm going away for three weeks. No. But I, for the next three weeks, I'm very busy with current cases. So there's, there's this sense of, of real rush. Now, when Mr Scott asked today for an extra amount of time, I don't think there's anything meddlesome or troublesome about this request. I think it is just time to allow him to access some outside authorities so that they can see whether or not the details that have been given so far are accurate, whether or not the details that are given are no, that, that'll do, whether, whether they're accurate. We'll leave it at that. Um, and so time is such a strange sort of a thing when it comes to complying with any of these government requirements, but I can see no reason why it can't be extended for another month so that um, the applicant can then find out, one of our residents can find out just what is going on. I'm, I'm unhappy about it, he's saying. Um, and I don't think there's anything, as I said, I don't think there's anything troublesome about that, but he does want to be able to draw on some outside expertise so that he can get a different oh, a, a different perspective. So I'm suggesting that we should really listen to that request sympathetically without it being in any way a condemnation of anything that has happened, except that the reality is experts take time to get their answers together. So that's all I have to say at this stage, I think. Thank you very much, Councillor Slay. Uh, the Director, do you have any uh, comments in response at this point? No, not really, Mr Mayor. Like, like I did explain that we've had double the amount of time that an applicant would normally get, so um, yeah, you make of that as what you will. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So are there any implications, Mr Director, if, if Council were to go down... Uh, the path that Council Slay is suggesting. Is there any um, noting that there's already been the extra two months, which is frankly, you know, generous? Uh, are there any implications in further delaying it that Council should be aware of, if any? Uh, Mr Mayor, there is a deemed refusal period if, there, if an applicant doesn't get a, a determination by uh, clearance at 60 days or 40 days? 40 days, yeah. Um, it can be deemed uh, refused and we could be taken to the Land Environment Court by the applicant. Now, I don't know whether that's particularly likely, but that is an option. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I've got... Yeah, I've got Councillor Smith. Yes, I think uh, seeing they've had double the amount of time for people to have a look at this, I think I'd recommend that uh, to go on the recommendation that's uh, in front of us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So you're moving the recommendation, moving Councillor the recommendation. Smith, on page 152. 58. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that, please? The Deputy Mayor moved and seconded. Discussion? I... Uh, sorry, Councillor Smith. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're right, thank you. Uh, moved, seconded, discussion, the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, look, you know, in all due respect to the, the people involved here, I, I can't see any issues that council, that as a council, we can um, knock this back. It's, um, to me, it seems pretty well black and white. I mean, you know, there's plenty of blocks that have got two accesses to their block and they have, want to have one to a house and one to a shed, I think that's fine. I don't see how it's going to interfere with neighbours. Um, 
Yes, I, I, I don't think council got any choice but to uh, agree to it. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. We go to Councillor Slay. Further discussion. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I didn't see. It. Thank you. Uh, let's just have a look when we're talking about these months that have elapsed, these 40 days or whatever. Uh, the first DA that was given to Mr. Scott as a neighbour of the person seeking to have some building approved uh, came on the 25th of March. Uh, the Mr. Burke, sorry, Mr. Scott suggested that this is probably, this wasn't an accurate document, a satisfactory document. He feels that, now this is his point of view, he feels that there is a range of, of issues that are mentioned in this document. So what did he do? He wrote a letter to the Director of the Environment. The letter that came back from the Director of the Environment on the 18th of May was then the next stage, I would suggest, in a uh, an ongoing discussion. Quite frankly, when we're talking about these 40 days, I think we've got to start our 40 days from the 18th of May, not from the 25th of March. If the point is not clear, I'll make it clearer. The first communication was confusing when advice was sought to get a better answer to that, or to get a clearer answer. Eventually, the second document that came, that we've had access to, um, was definitely clearer. Whether or not it is totally clear is the question that's a moot point. And it's for that reason that Mr Scott wants to talk to somebody else from outside with the sort of the skill and the, um, yeah, the, the skill and the awareness that our own director and our own town planner have got. Um, and I, I think we shouldn't really be swayed, Mr Deputy Mayor, by the fact that the first contact was a long time ago. It's the first meaningful contact, I would suggest, that is the factor. I would ask, is there any, apart from minor inconvenience, is there, is there any serious reason why we can't say, let's give it a month, pardon me, Right. Oh, thought it was whiskey. <laughs> um, is there any reason why we couldn't say yes, extend it by a month, just to allow both parties to have a fair say in the matter? That is the argument that I'm presenting. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Slay. Uh, well, we have a motion before us, and uh, we are having further discussion. Is there any councillor that hasn't? Councillor McLeod. Uh, just further to the drainage issue, um, is there any scope to negotiate um, around that dimension of that 300 mil pipe to address some of the concerns about drainage um, under that access point to alleviate any issues that may be present? Thank you. The director. Um, was 300 mil specified? I, I, the normal standard is 450. I'm not sure. I, I had assumed I think that was what I was told. Okay. Okay. The engineer. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. So it could be 300 or it could be 450. However, generally speaking, the way we set up driveways is we have the pipe access as a low flow set up uh, with a... Um, a dish at the front side or the back side of the, the pipe culvert so that if you get, um, you know, back up or build up that there's a there's a high level bypass. Um, so that, uh, there are ways definitely around um, uh, negating, you know, water issues, particularly on a, it does get flat down the bottom but it's relatively sloped um, up a bit higher. Thank you very much. Further discussion, there's no further discussion, then I'm going to put the motion to you and again uh, we need to uh, record formally each councillor's vote. So a motion by Councillor Smith, second Councillor Sinclair, our Deputy Mayor, it resolved uh, that Council grant development consent uh, to Mr D Burke to construct a steel frame shed at One Leary Place tomorrow, subject to conditions. It's been moved and seconded. There's no further discussion. I'm going to put the motion to you. 
All those of that opinion, please raise your hands. To the contrary, I declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Now, is there anything of a further late urgent nature from the Director? Nothing, Mr Mayor. No, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Councillors, we proceed over to page 160, the Administration and Finance Department report. 13.1 policy framework and that's in the hands of our acting general manager. Thank you Mr Mayor. So uh, the policy framework which was uh, came back to council last month and has now been on display for 28 days. Uh, there were no submissions received so I'm um, just looking for this policy to be adopted. Thank you very much. Councillors there is a recommendation there on page 160 that the draft policy framework is adopted. This is all turn. The Deputy Mayor is moving that way. Thank you, Second Councillor Oliver. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Very much. Let's go over to page 161, 13.2, the maximum interest rating. The Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So the maximum um, interest allowed to be charged is 6% on outstanding rates and charges. Uh, so that's the rate we're looking to introduce this for next year. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, the recommendation on page 161 that we adopt the maximum rate uh, of interest 6% for 21-22 financial year. Councillor Winky has moved. Councillor Smith's moved, seconded. All those. Uh, further discussion? For no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion and carry it. Thank you very much, councillors. Let's go over to page 162, 13.3, the draft fees and charges for 21-22 financial year. And I defer to the acting general manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yes, so the uh, draft fees and charges uh, have been on display for 28 days. There were two submissions received, uh, which were discussed at the workshop that we held um, last week. And the changes we introduced are noted there in the report. Um, I'll also bring to your attention in the fees and charges. So it's on page 166 of your business paper. Um, at the, the last sentence there in the pricing policy, um, it was Council's wish that from the 1st of July we introduce a policy of only waiving a maximum of 50% uh, of fees uh, upon application to Council. Uh, and that was specifically mentioned in relation to the Town Hall, but um, I took the liberty of putting it at the uh, end of the pricing policy there, so I felt that it was Council's wish that they would be able to apply that policy to other fees and charges, not just the Town Hall. Um, so I'll just bring that to your attention that that note is at the bottom of the pricing policy there. Thank you Madam Acting General Manager and, and that certainly is my reflection uh, of the workshop that those uh, fees can be donated back up to the value of 50% um, as per resolution of Council of the Day. Is that Council's general reflection? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Judd. Oh, probably the crucial words, probably the word may. Yeah. May be reviewed, you know, that's it right. doesn't mean that... It's we'll going to happen. Yes, yeah. yes. That's right. Now, the Council of the Day will consider each request on its merits. So, uh, councillors, the fees and charges for 2021-2022 are there for your consideration. And there's a recommendation on page 162 for you to consider. That being that those fees and charges be adopted. Councillor Winky, Councillor Oliver, is your... No, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Winky, the Deputy Mayor seconding the motion. Yep. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? There's no further discussion. If not, I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, councillors, let's go over to page 184. 
13.4, the draft operational plan, delivery plan, resourcing strategy. The acting general manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the draft delivery plan, uh, resourcing strategy and operational plan have been on display for 28 days. Uh, exhibition closed at 12 o'clock today and no submissions were received. Thank you. Thank you very much, councillors. So there uh, has been no submissions received uh, at the close of submissions. There is a recommendation there on page 184 that we adopt those respective plans for you to consider. Councillor Oliver, Councillor Slay, moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Over to page 185, 13.5, rates and charges for 2021-2022, the Acting General Manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So, the yeah, rates and charges, the reports as written. Uh, happy to take any questions. Of course, that was a 2% increase in the rates, 10% uh, increase in sewer and 5% increase in domestic waste charges. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, there is a recommendation there on page 187 for you to consider. The Deputy Mayor. I'll move the recommendation. Mr. Thank Mayor. you. Seconded, Councillor Reinhold. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. For the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Thank you very much indeed. Councillors, over to page 188, 13.6. Uh, very significant policy and uh, for Council, an important one. The Development Infrastructure Deferred Payment Policy, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, so after the, April, or the resolution of the April Council meeting was that we send our policy to our solicitor for comment and um, also have a sample ag uh, agreement drawn up. So we sought legal advice. Uh, a couple of amendments have been made in accordance with her advice, which is on page 206 of the business paper. Um, if you'd like, I can just run through the changes that were uh, implemented into the policy. Yes, please. So on page 192, uh, under application, the second paragraph there, the solicitor recommended that we include the words or more so that it would um, involve the creation of at least three or more additional lots. So these are the type of developments that we're considering. Mm -hmm. um, one item that the Economic Development Officer and myself thought might be handy to have in this policy is on page 193 under operational procedures, we included that third paragraph there. Um, for instances where the entire amount of the council owned infrastructure would not be deferred. So that non-deferred portion, the payment for that would be required up front um, before works commence. So, um, that was just, That's a good one. we've included that for just in case. Mm. Uh, and then on the following page, 194, uh, in regards to our legal protections, so on the advice of our solicitor, under registration of caveats, uh, the second paragraph has been included there for clarification, and also um, dot point three registration of interest, that paragraph has been amended in accordance with the legal advice we received. Thank you very much, Madam Acting General Manager, and it's, I think, a very wise decision of Council to get that legal advice for such an important uh, policy decision that's before us. So, uh, Councillors, there, uh, there is a recommendation on page 188 for you to consider that Council note the report, including the changes uh, to the Development Infrastructure Deferred Payment Policy. Very historical <laughs> decision, this one. Councillor Smith. Yep, note the report, please. Uh, uh, sorry, you're, you're saying that we um, note the report, including the changes? Yep, to it. Right, so that's what the recommendation's saying, that we note the report, including the changes, instead of, <coughs> should it be adopting the report? Uh, through you, the Mr. Acting General Manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. It, 
I think it should say we need to adopt the the policy. Is it going to go right. on exhibition? Yeah, yeah, as written. No, it's been, it's on, been exhi on exhibition. Yes, yes. so we don't have yep. to do it again with yeah. those changes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So, therefore, uh, that council, that instead of note, that we adopt the report. So, Councillor Smith, you've moved that way. Seconded for the motion, please. Councillor Winky moved and seconded. Discussion, Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just note there's nothing in here covering whether an applicant can have multiple loans outstanding at any one time if they were doing a stage development. And I'm wondering whether Council has an appetite to limit it to one application or whether the first loan needs to be cleared before a new application is... Think Because I worry about having two or three loans out there with only the requirement that they be repaid when either the sooner of all lots are sold or 10 years. So, strictly speaking, you could have three lots out there owing millions of dollars to council and the only stipulation to repay is when all the lots are sold or 10 years. Mm. No, that's a, I think that's a fair question, Councillor mm. McLaren. Uh, do we have a, a comment from the town planner? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, so within um, the policy uh, in the application procedure, uh, one of the factors that council needs to be considering when it receives uh, perhaps a second application, that uh, council must consider the current levels of financial assistance provided to the applicant. So that forms part of the decision making. So in um, the situation that Councillor McLaren um, potentially envisaged if there was uh, an outstanding um, debt that hasn't been repaid to council, council would be required to take that into consideration in making their decision if they wish to extend further finance. So it, 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 um, it would be brought to council's attention about how much money was still outstanding in relation to that particular developer. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McLaren. Thank you for that. Um, I wondered whether Council wanted to set a maximum exposure per applicant or whether you're happy to just have that fluid determination at the time. Um, yeah, that's my comment. Thank you. We will uh, we'll go now to the, the Economic Development Manager for comment. Thank you, the Manager. Uh, I, would, I would suggest that we um, leave it fairly fluid, given that um, we don't want to penalise uh, or potentially restrict applicants that um, are paying well, and we could end up in a situation where the policy restricts us from, from doing that. So at the moment, it's pretty open-ended and, and gives us the um, opportunity to make that determination based on their ability to pay how well the, the lots have been sold. So if there is uh, an applicant who is has made a successful application and the development is selling well, we don't want the policy to restrict that. We want to encourage that moving forwards. So just have to be careful about how that's worded. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mr. Manager. It is important, councillors, that we we you know that we tease this out. Yes, um, you know policies are reviewed as and when required by the council of the day. But you know this is this is a big big deal. So so we thank you for for that, uh, councillors. If there's no further discussion on the motion. A uh, game-changing motion, <laughs> it, it is, to be frank. Uh, I'm going to put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Uh, councillors, I, I warmly congratulate you on the uh, motion that you have just adopted. Obviously, council will uh, receive a report uh, at a uh, later council meeting in relation to uh, how that, in fact, is uh, funded and we will uh, determine uh, that, of course, with the various options available, and Council will consider, consider that. But I want to congratulate you on that, um, uh, that game-changing decision that I think um, is going to only further enhance uh, Tamora Shire. And uh, we also uh, pay tribute to our town planner and all staff involved, uh, and the, the Economic Development Manager, and all staff that were involved in uh, this policy. But again, to councillors, uh, thank you. Uh, councillors, we now go over to page 208, 13.7, solar lights at Lake 
Centenary, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So the report is as written. Happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, the... Oh, thank you. Props. See, I didn't think we had props <laughs> in this chamber. Uh, now, the Economic Development Manager would like to talk about uh, the solar lights at Lake Centenary Project. The Manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We have, um, since writing the report, received an updated quote from Beyond the company that um, are going to supply or propose to supply the lights. Um, the director's just gone to get an example that they a light that they've sent through to us. Um, so what we've proposed, uh, which was written in the report, is that we shift all the funding from supply and install to supply only, giving us an opportunity to um, to you know get more lights that can. Uh, populate uh, and light up a lot more of the lake path. So they've come back with um, amended quote to say that for the funding amount that they've um, allocated from both the parties that they can deliver 137 lights, um, which is uh, up from the original quote of 50 lights if they were going to install them themselves. Um, so that we feel is enough to um, to illuminate the walking track on the entire southern section from where the bridges, the footbridges will be installed um, at the mouth of the lake, all the way around um, past the swimming area and up to the entrance of the um, take uh, near where the um, Tard Road is. Um, that's spaced at 10 metres apart, which on the scientific test that the director and I did uh, at the lake one night holding this uh, light in position should be adequate to be able to um, provide enough lighting for um, for, for walkers to see where they're going on the path. Thank you. Would you like to hold the light up? Are you strong? Yep. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> so this is a quality, this is not a dodgy brothers plastic type. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good quality. No, that's... <laughs> no, that's very, very, um, that's very Im impressive. So um, there is a, um, a, a way to change the um, light from uh, warm light to a cool light. Um, yeah. That'd be better, wouldn't it? Mm. Is it? Yeah, see, I like white light. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, Councillor, you have a report here. That what what is a question about notice to the acting general manager? The budget implications, as noted there on page two hundred and eight, six thousand from Lake Centenary Maintenance Fund. Uh, I would assume that we have uh, reasonable funds in that reserve. Mm. Uh, the Maintenance fund will be able to handle that, I'm sure, 6,000, yep. Thank you. Thank you. The engineer. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a uh, question would be, is it proposed to close the loop at any time, or is this it? The manager. Are you talking about putting additional lighting for the rest of the walk? I think, yes, that should be something that we uh, investigate as a future um, uh, funded project. Um, where the funds come from, that's you know up for us, to, up for discussion. But I think the type of lighting that we will would install for the, to finish off the remainder of the lake, and I think there's also um, council discussion about illuminating the entrance to the lake as well and the driveway. That they would require different types of lighting, especially when we're talking about the tarred um, strip that. Um, that enters the ag station that would need a different type of lighting as well as well as the lighting that needs to go across the bridge the walkways yeah, through the treat area that would need a different type of lighting so i think that needs um, further investigation and and future funding thank you thank you i uh you didn't have anything right okay councillors you have a report that's before you on page 208 and the recommendation for you to consider the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks Mr Mayor. Um, this proposal was put to the Lake Committee and then it was sent around to the members of the committee 
by email and uh, yeah, all the comments that come back was um, very positive. They're all 100% behind it. Mm. All thought it was a great idea, which I think it is too. So um, yeah, they're very impressed and very willing to uh, put the, their share, the, their mm. part of the money in, into the project. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. It certainly is noted by council that uh, you know again these partnerships and uh, Lake Centenary willing to contribute as as well as uh, the the Sebastopol Solar Farm entity uh, and council. It just seems like a a very positive project. Well, councillors, we're in your hands. There is a recommendation there for you to consider, or is there an alternative? Councillor McLaren. Uh, no, I'm happy with the recommendation um, with an additional uh, letter of thanks sent to the Sebastopol Solar Farm for their donation for the lights. Thank you. Most appropriate. Councillor Winky, moved by Councillor McLaren, seconded Councillor Winky. Uh, the recommendation that you see on page 208 and further that a letter of thanks be sent to the Sebastopol Solar Farm uh, to thank them for their generosity. Uh, is there further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion to you. All those with that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Right. Is there anything uh, of an urgent, comp uh, an urgent late nature from the acting general manager at this point? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Very much. Now, let's go to page 210, correspondence, 14.1, Big River Entertainment, the 2021 Tomorrow Country Music Festival, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So just some uh, requests from, the, for, from Big River Entertainment for assistance with accommodation for some of their visiting artists. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, there is the report there on the correspondence on uh, page 211 for you to consider. It certainly is, you know, a fantastic uh, music festival. Um, it's also a fair bit of dollars as well that's being asked for, so it's up to you. The Deputy Mayor. Yes, the Mayor. Um, yeah, as I said, it's, um, it's certainly bring some people to town and so forth if they've been running, they missed out last year, but the previous years they've had a very success, successful event that's been growing, I think, each year. Um, it does, it is a significant investment from council, um, which I think is, certainly pays off for the community, but um, I just think it's, as this is going to be in November, so after our new um, policy comes in, that, I think perhaps if we support this, it'd only be to 50% rather than 100%. So, job moved that way. That we support the support the um, the request of 50% up of to the, the value of 50% yes. of the donation of the fees back. Yes. Thank you. So the deputy mayor's moved that way and seconded for the motion. Please, Councillor Winky has seconded the motion. Uh, the deputy mayor, would you mind? Thank you. Uh, so, moved and seconded discussion on the motion, Councillor McLaren. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with that motion. I just wondered that will that cover the cleaning costs for those um, accommodation services for four hundred and five dollars thereabouts? Yeah, thank you. Good question. Uh, does that go to the Director of Environmental Services? Yeah, that's part of the rate. So, um, yeah, that that is a per night charge, which includes cleaning. So, thank you. Well, councillors, you have a motion that the Deputy Mayor has moved and uh, seconded by Councillor Winky that we donate uh, fees uh, back up to the value of 50% to uh, uh, Big River Entertainment. There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Councillors, over to page 212, 14.2, Riverina Local Land Services, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So the correspondence that's attached here is in response to a letter that we wrote to all of the board members uh, of the Riverina LLS last month, um, and they've just responded to the concerns that we raised with them. 
Thank you. The, certainly the letter seems um, like it's patting us on the head, really, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, the Deputy Mayor. Yes, Mayor, I'm, I'm still concerned about this. Um, yeah, a mob of, well, as they say, 900 plus head of cattle. Yeah, that is a big mob of cattle. It's, um, it's a big mob of sheep to have in one mob, you know, to be walking around roads. And to have that many cattle in one mob in this area, I think, is way over the top. I'd, you know, I'd assume three or 400 head of cattle would be a big mob around here. I mean, that sort of mob is maybe, maybe fair enough out further out west where their TRCs are, you know, half a K or up to a kilometre wide, and there's plenty of wide open space. Um, Around in the Tamor Shire and, and surrounding shires, I think it's far too big a mob for a start. Um, and I just don't think they're going to achieve what they what they think they're going to achieve in keeping uh, weeds under control and so forth. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to cause more problems with the uh, the landholders neighbouring these stock reserves. And uh, so, as I mentioned earlier on, that we did have a conversation of. Director of Environment and Services himself had a conversation with um, this uh, Finn Martin from LLS and uh, has invited him across to, to once again explain perhaps in more detail and uh, give us also more chance to talk, to express our concerns at the next Asset and Ops meeting. Thanks, Mr Deputy Mayor. So that, though, will be after the consultation period concludes, but... Um uh, I just note that it's only just read it then the 4th of July, um, unless they extended it. But anyway, um, well, just ponder on that thought. I'll go to Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm a little concerned that the public consultation period has gone under the radar to a great degree. I have not heard that it is even opened and it'll be closed before anyone has realised that they've had a public consultation period. So I'm wondering whether we can't advertise it somewhere on our social media or paper to get some farmers to realise what they're proposing education-wise to get some feedback. Otherwise, they're going to have zero submissions and say everyone's mm. fine with it when they're really not. I mean, we have a reserve next to us and the only reason we have it is to stop these sorts of stock coming through the region to that knock down your fences and carry weeds and, and so forth. So. I just doubt their whole plan. They're, they're proposing that each person who has a permit will have a three-month grazing plan and submit it to council and they will move according to that plan and apparently the weeds will germinate at that time when they arrive and it will be wonderful. But I very much doubt that. Mm. Thank you, Councillor McLaren. I, I actually think that's a, a very wise idea to get that out there, <laughs> to be frank, because we... Frankly, we haven't got too long. Uh, Councillor Smith? Yeah, now this is what I referred to when I uh, passed on that email that they sent to me, and it's a newsletter that they put out, and there has been no public consultation that I can see in anywhere except a newsletter from the, the Rural Lands Protection Board, or whatever you want to call them now. Mm. And I just think it's not good enough because, mm. you know, who wants to have a thousand head of cattle alongside a crop that you've got there and not much feed on the road? You know, there's not mm. a lot to hold up a thousand head of cattle. Mm. Anyway, I just totally disagree with what they're doing. Mm. Anyway. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Councillor Winky. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. No, <coughs> it's, it's pretty evident I've been speaking with, uh, with, with, with some of the farmers that have been coming across and, and none of them have heard much about this at all, if anything. Um, and those that have have heard it by word of mouth from other people. So it's 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 and it was in one of their letters that they sent out that they advocated that they weren't compelled to let land owners know. And and I think this is just a, a shamble. It really is, and it, it's it's really disgraceful the way that that happened. And uh, and, and it shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be. Well, we don't need to sort of have this sort of stuff going on. But they're just hell bent on doing it, which mm. is the sad part about it. Mm. Thank you. Councillor Winky, I'll go to the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, just for the, those of us not, who are perhaps not farmers and may not quite understand it, um, if you can picture a mob of a thousand head of cattle walking, yeah, you know, continually walking around, the, the strong fit ones, always at the front, they get the better of the feed. And then the ones at the back, they get what the front ones don't eat, and after they've trampled all over it. So, to me, 
if I was the one who put those cattle on the road thinking I'm going to fatten a thousand head of cattle to take to market, well, you're going to have a big, what we call a tail in your mob. The front ones will you know, be fine. And um, I guess if you sold the front ones off, then they slowly move up. But if you're going to keep your mob a thousand there, you're going to be continually adding to them. So um, just, just from a farming point of view, from you know, looking after your cattle and livestock and so forth, you're always going to have the mob, the tail end of your mob, which will be always sure to feed or what they're eating has been trampled on and you yeah, know what else done by the ones in front of them. So uh, another, re another reason why it doesn't make a lot of sense. And it'd be interesting to see what sort of response they do get to people wanting to do this, actually. Thank you. I don't know, Mr Deputy Mayor, whether you or Council, this is just an idea throwing out there, whether the Council even, besides promoting it in our local press and um, social media and Narrabara News, community radio, etc., whether is it an issue that council itself wanted to, to host uh, something and invite uh, the uh, Riverina Local Land Services uh, chairman and general manager to come and address uh, interested citizens to attend? I, I don't know. Is that something that you could consider, the Deputy Mayor? I'm, I'm just wondering if now they've got uh, this Finn Martin agreeing to come to our assets meeting, whether we sort of advertise that publicly so that any people out there of interest could come along to the meeting and listen to what he's got to say. Well, noting that it will be after the consultation period. but It will be at, at the same time if we can sort of make it public that in the meantime, so landholders can uh, have their say between now and then, but mm. there's no reason we can't, even if it is after the period that and they do put it in place and mm. we can't uh, make it public anyway. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McLaren. Uh, I note in the letter they're uh, planning a number of public meetings and I spoke to a chap a few days ago about this whole thing. Um, and so they are planning on coming to Tamora or West Wylong or somewhere close by. So it, there's every chance they might come to Tamora. So perhaps if we find out that they are coming to Tamora, we can do a public information campaign to try and get as many people to the mm. town hall as possible to put mm. these questions to them and have a bit of a full court press on the issue. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Councillor McLaren. Uh, Councillor Judd. Yes, yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Everyone, I support Councillor Sinclair's concerns about um, large numbers of cattle coming through the area. Um, I'm retired from cattle at the moment, but uh, I run a, did run a mob of 60 uh, cows and calves. And any time they broke through a gate and got into a cropping paddock, they made a lot of damage, you know, and so that's what only a small mob could be to what this was. And uh, if you have a sort of wet winter like we are at the moment and some really good crops, I can see um, some major damage being done, you know. So I, I, I uh, share um, Councillor Sinclair's concern. Mm. Thank you. I'll go to Councillor Winky. Well, I suppose the other way of looking at it too, I'm wondering where they're going to get all these cattle from the moment in the current climate because it's just not around. Mm. So it, it may become a non-event in a lot of ways, but I don't know. It's still like, I think we should uh, be pushing on it mm. so it doesn't eventuate down the track. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Councillor Winky. Well, Councillor, what's, uh, what's your wish to move forward? Councillor McLaren. Uh, I'd like to move that we contact the River and Local Land Service to determine the date that they may come to tomorrow for consultation as a first step. Um, so are we, do, are we requesting them to do that or are we just well, asking? Well, that we request that they have a public meeting at yeah. Tamora. Yep, I think that's... And then we um, conduct some public um, awareness about this meeting and mm. move forward from there. No, that's good. Thank you. The Deputy Mayor, you're happy to second that. Move and second it. Is there discussion? If not, I'll put that motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Page 215. Oh, good Lord. 14.3. <laughs> I can't even say the words without cringing, but um, Wagga shows us, so not that word, the mobile stage word. <laughs> um, so just before council, as anybody asks, <laughs> I'm going, going to... Uh, uh, have the engineer inform you of the, 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 the progress 
that is being made on the new mobile stage, and then we will proceed on to this request. So, the, the, the manager, if you don't mind. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So, um, <coughs> we've, we're getting some advice from a structural engineer in relation to the um, uh, electronic actuated struts, and you know, it would seem that they're adequate, but they're wrongly positioned. Um, and I think that's due to the set of steps or something. I'm not right across it other than to say, um, uh, we've taken it out of Gary's hands and we're onto it. And um, when there's something meaningful to report, we'll, we'll be back. Thank you. Now, the structural engineer is based in Wagga Wagga, not Queensland. <laughs> yeah, so... To know that. Uh, the manager? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we, we, it's actually... Uh, Daryl Kemp's uh, doing some work on it for us and he's um, yeah got a consultant over there that he works with um, for a very reasonable price. They've provided some advice so I think things are headed in the right direction but we'll, um, yeah, like I said, I've only got the high level details. I, you probably know more than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. But councillors, that is for your information and uh, it's important information for you. Now, the Wagga Show Society's request in relation to the old mobile stage. Uh, Councillor Reinhold. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mm. Um, could we just check with um, Amanda Gay, re her dates? She has some functions coming up that she wants to use the uh, stage. So I would rather we use it than oh. give it out to Wagga mm. if our new one isn't <coughs> up and running. Mm. So if we could do that, please. Yeah. No, thanks uh, very much, Councillor Reinhold. Uh, that's a, I think that's a very good point. I'll go to the Deputy Mayor. Yes, Mayor, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not see this go outside the show. I really, it's, um, it, it's got some issues too. I mean, the flooring's pretty ordinary. The carpet's starting to lift and it's a trip hazard and so forth. And uh, yeah, it's fine to go over there. They'll come and get it and take, bring it back and so forth. But I just wonder if someone does trip and fall and, or something gets hurt, who's it come back onto? Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd, I'd rather see it stay right where it is. So. Thank you. Do you wish to move that direction? Yeah, right. so, so you move that we deny the request uh, and further that the old mobile stage does not leave, as long as it's in council's possession, that it doesn't leave the Tamora Shire. So you're happy to move that way? Thank you. Seconder, well, Councillor Slay. Can we just answer that, though, first, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and explain why? Oh, yes. I, I think that's important to know. Yep. Just so you know that it's known for your safety. Yep. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Sorry, Thank you, Councillor Slay. So, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Slay, has moved and seconded that motion, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll just say that we've got a uh, policy on the hiring of the mobile stage and it doesn't differentiate between the old and the new mobile stage and that policy actually says that the mobile stage doesn't leave the Tamora Shire um, uh, only at the permission of council. So, so this motion will then clarify that, uh, uh, that sort of grey area. Yeah. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. As there's no further discussion, I'll put... At least you know what's happening with the new stage as well. So there's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. So when the general manager does return, he'll be ever so pleased. Uh, <laughs> Councillors, so let's go over to page 216, 14.4. Australian Government Mobile Service Centre, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So just the um, Mobile Service Centre requesting parking out the front of the community centre uh, on the date specified in July. Thank you. Uh, councillors, that's there for your consideration. The Deputy Mayor, so you move that we grant approval. Second, Councillor Reinhold. So, so Councillor Reinhold, Councillor Slay, you uh, sit on the board of the community centre. Are you obviously happy with that? OK. Moved. And seconded that we accede to the request. There's no further discussion. I'll put the. Uh, Councillor Slay? I've got the only question that comes to my mind is what are they going to do at 4 o'clock on Monday and there's a change on, at 9 o'clock on Tuesday? Are they going to take it away and put it somewhere else? It's rather strange. I would have thought you were going to move. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Slay. Councillor Slay. 
I am confused as to whether there is whether they're going to take it away on the night of the 19th and then bring it back on the 20th. It just doesn't seem like a very wieldy plan. Mm. Uh, however, that's what they've asked for, so I think by all means let's give it to them. Yep. Thanks, Councillor Slay. Uh, moved and seconded. If there's no further discussion, uh, I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion. Carried. Thank you. 14.5 over on page 220. Polly Peddle, the Acting General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So just a um, confirmation or informing Council of the dates that they now intend to hold the Polly Pedal, which is the 5th to the 12th of September. Thank you. And nil budget implications, which we, we like. We do. <laughs> thank you. Uh, councillors, there is that request there for you to consider, and there is a recommendation at the bottom of page 220 that we approve the new date. Deputy Mayor, Councillor Winky moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, so I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, let's go over to page 240 on 14.6, Tomorrow West Fate for 2022. Now, I'm declaring a, a non-pecuniary interest. This correspondence is from Tomorrow West uh, p and C. I'm president of the Tomorrow West Public School. Uh, what am I? Uh, I uh, the school council. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, actually, I might, I might just uh, uh, vacate the chair and uh, hand the gavel to the deputy mayor. <laughs> Councillors, the report's pretty straightforward. I'll, uh... Uh, thank you, um, Mr Deputy Mayor. I'd better leave the room too because I also sit on that council as well, so I'll uh, take off. Well, Councillors, the report's there for your consideration. Council Winky. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor and the Chairperson. Um, I think we're, we're, we're going to be tied in here with our um, new policy as well, and uh, and I move that way that um, that we uh, we give them at that 50% of the cost, or donate or hand back 50% of the cost. Thank you, Councillor Wiki. Uh, yes, that's I think you're pretty right there. Um, do I have a seconder? Councillor Slay, second the motion. Uh, any further discussion? They did indicate in their letter, and I was a bit worried about the 50%, but they did end, indicate in their letter that uh, wavering, wavering, I presume they mean, or reducing the higher fee for the above, so at least they might be more aware of it. It's going to come as a bit of a shock to various organisations that have for year after year after year been able to get the total refund. That's where uh, we have to stick together. Yeah, you're definitely right, Councillor Slay, but I think uh, if we right from where we go that we, um, we stick to the policy, uh, I think uh, the various organisations will soon get to understand what it's all about. So, uh, any further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Motion carried. Could you invite the Mayor back in, please? Uh, Mr Mayor and Councillor Oliver, in your hopes and absence, the uh, council moved that 50% uh, of the uh, uh, higher charges be uh, donated back to the organisation. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Mayor, and thank you, councillors. Uh, councillors, we do have uh, some items that were deemed urgent in terms of uh, late correspondence. 
in your loose leave late report pages. Uh, 14.7, <coughs> hearing bus, uh, hearing Australia bus rather, and the, gen, uh, the uh, acting general manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a request for the hearing, uh, hearing Australia bus to be parked at Paleface Park on the 14th of July. Thank you, Councillor Reinhold. You're moving that we accede to the request. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Oliver. Moved and seconded. Uh, is there further discussion? If not, <laughs> see, we had two of them that did it. I knew someone would. <laughs> Moved and seconded. If there's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Now we go to 14.8, Measure Up Bus, the Acting General Manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So, the, yeah, the Measure Up Bus will, is asking to be in town on the 8th and 9th of July in front of the Community Centre. Thank you. Uh, councillors, there is the request for you to consider. Councillor McLaren. I'd like to move we uh, can, and can accept their request to park outside the community centre on the 8th and 9th of July. Thank you. So Councillor McLaren is moving that we see to the request. Uh, is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Reinhold moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, so measure up is... So measure, well, I thought it was girth, but what? Bone density. Ah, bone density, thank you. Now, genuinely, that's what I thought. <laughs> As in belly, yes, girth. <laughs> We're editing this. Anyway, moved and seconded. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. I have to turn that there. Uh, Councillors, let's go over to page 242. The. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. I go back. The Acting General Manager, do we have any further urgent late items of correspondence, please? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Now we go to page 242. Uh, we have received uh, notice of motions 15.1 in relation to cost shifting and budget implications. And I defer to Councillor Judd. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The reason for my questions on notice today is not to actually move a motion on the notice of motion, but to continue the discussion that started at the last council meeting about the reasons why this council is facing its first deficit budget for many years and the possible ways we could address the situation to get back to a surplus budget in the future. At the last meeting, Council Oliver said we may have to cut our expenses to match our resources, that is, live within our means, while Council Smith said we may have to raise the rates above what is allowed as a way to work towards a surplus. I then argued that I felt fixing our situation was more complicated than that than just raising rates and cutting costs. I know with continuous cost shifting by the state and federal governments and the need to bring an increasing depreciation of our assets to affect our bottom line, I've asked that if, with all the other factors in play, are rural councils like Tamora going to be financially sustainable into the future? My studies at uni probably taught me to have, have a more analytical look at our situation, so I'm keen to find out more facts to do the research on what really is our long-term position. If we are forced to go to government, and I know the Mayor's having meetings with the state members and that, and we can't continue and argue that we can't continue down this track, we need to have some good arguments and statistics to back up our arguments. So that's why I'm putting some questions on those so we can find out what's the real effect of cost shifting, what's the real effect of depreciation on our bottom line, and what if other, what factors have been affected by depreciation um, have suffered and if we have, go for a, a rate rise above the, the rate pegging, will it really solve the problem? So uh, that's why I'm tossing these questions up for discussion today, Mr Mayor. So. Thank you, Councillor Judd. Uh,
Council Judge, just before I uh, ask Council for what they'd like to do, I, I thank you for putting these uh, important questions to Council, number one, and they are extremely, extremely important. Uh, however, I did uh, mention to you previously that uh, to have these serious issues considered in relation to cost shifting and those associated questions that uh, uh, that I said to you that the Deputy Mayor and I and the Acting General Manager strongly held the view that we should be having a workshop dedicated to consider these serious issues where we can uh, analyse in depth, as we should, the, the very complex issues uh, that are involved and, uh, and where people can have uh, the freedom to express uh, even uh, more views uh, in a workshop environment. And I, I don't believe that it's appropriate, in my personal view, for us to tease out such crucial issues as this uh, in a, a meeting um, uh, alone. I, I think it needs to be workshopped out and it certainly um, it takes a heck of a lot of work from staff and I'm also conscious of our acting general manager who's also in the role of uh, director of administration and finance and I am um, uh, also conscious of, of that and uh, as well. So Councillor Judd, what you're raising is crucial, uh, it is so important but I think that it deserves to have it teased out on a specific standalone workshop. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, I, just to reply to Councillor Judd there, uh, what I did say was if we are going to have the top end uh, main street upgrade, we would have to put the rates up. Not just only what was said just a minute ago, because that's what I said. If you're going to have the top end, uh, the best main street, somebody's got to pay for it, and there's only one way to pay for it, is there to put the rates up and everybody's got to pay for it. Mm. And that's rather than just put it the way that Councillor Judd has just put in that. Thank no. you. Well, thank you for that clarification, Councillor Smith. So, uh, Councillors, that's my very firm view in relation to these crucial issues uh, that are before us. Uh, Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I do agree with your comments. I think um, the uh, pressure on our staff at the moment is... Um, quite bearing, um, particularly our Acting General Manager d doing two roles at the moment. I think it really needs a standalone workshop to get down to the nuts and bolts of all of this. I don't think it's anything can be achieved at a meeting such as this, so I'll move that we um, schedule a workshop to discuss these um, cost-shifting issues. Thank you, Thank Mr. you. Seconded for the motion. Thank you, Councillor Winky. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. But I do thank you, Councillor Judd, um, uh, for raising, because I think that there wouldn't be anyone in the chamber that doesn't agree with, um, uh, with, what, you're, with what you're saying, and we will tease it out in depth uh, on a workshop uh, as soon as a, a date can be determined. So thank you for uh, bringing this to Council. Councillor Judd? I might just raise one other issue, and that's probably come up at the Algo conference this coming month. Uh, it's, it's about, um, and um, Linda Scott brought it up at the Rhodes conference the other day as well, and that was about the um, the battle we should be supporting is one by the campaign by Local Government New South Wales and Algo to raise the level of financial assistance grants from the federal government. Many years ago, when it started, it was 1.1% of the Commonwealth tax revenue. Mm. But over the years, it, that's deteriorated to just 0.6% of the Commonwealth tax re revenue. Algus' campaign is to restore it back to just 1% of the Commonwealth tax revenue. This mightn't sound a lot, but an overscore scheme to the federal budget would make a huge difference to country councils who are heavily reliant on these tax grants. So uh, I think that's one campaign we should be supporting. Mm. 100% Councillor Judd, and I remember that uh, that uh, was a campaign that there was some, was it the previous term of council, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't think anyone in the chamber would disagree, disagree with uh, what, you're, uh, what you're saying. So is that um, uh, maybe a motion that uh, we can consider after we consider this one, Councillor Judd? 
if you'd like to, yeah, thank you. So I'll, um, I'll put the motion that's before you uh, from Councillor Oliver, Councillor Winky, that Council schedules a workshop to discuss the, the, not the motion of cost shifting, the issue of cost shifting and budget implications that captures the mover and seconder. Your motion, thank you. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those of that opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Clear the motion and carry it. Thank you very much. I defer, uh, Councillor McLaren. I was going to move a, an amendment that we include the effect of asset revaluation and depreciation as well, because it's not just cost shifting, it's them coming along and say, oh, that's worth $10 million now, and there's your depreciation, because that's a huge, well, almost bigger than cost shifting. That's true, Councillor McLaren. I, I suppose I assumed uh, that that would be all encompassing. Uh, to be frank, uh, the acting general manager. That's right. Yeah. Cost shifting is a separate issue than depreciation. So yeah, they that can be all workshopped, um, it, potentially or two separate ones. Like they're quite different issues actually. And a lot of work. <laughs> we can do it together, but they are quite different issues. Yeah. Well, just, just remember also, councillors, that there is, you know, there's a lot of work involved in this as well, but it's obviously, it's also important work. Uh, so we'll go to the general, uh, the acting general manager. Yeah. I, I think we can include in the resolution, um, yeah, cost shifting and depreciation and its budget implications or something along those lines, if the mover and seconder are happy. And just further to that, um, the engineer and myself are very keen to um, work together uh, on um, the asset management side of things and the impacts of depreciation and really strip back our financials, um, different funding sources and to, um, you know, to understand all the driving forces here right. and um, to help us all make better informed decisions going forward. Yeah. Thank you. The, uh, yeah, and, and again, there'll be a heck of a lot of work involved, so we will schedule a workshop, uh, again, giving our staff the time to be able to get that information together for us. Um, and then, because this is crucial, this is crucial stuff. Uh, so I'm going to ask the mover and second, are you happy to include uh, the issue of also depreciation as well? So mover and second are happy. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> has been moved uh, by Councillor Oliver, seconded Councillor Winky, that Council schedules a workshop to discuss the issue of cost shifting budget uh, yeah, appreciation. Okay, so get rid of depreciation. Yep, thank you. Okay, mover and second are happy. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Councillor Judd. Thank you, Mayor. Hang on, Councillor Judd. I'll move that we support the campaign. Councillor Judd. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll move that we support the campaign by Local Government New South Wales and ALGA in their uh, efforts to raise the convince the federal government to raise the level of financial assistance grants to be 1% of the federal com of the Commonwealth tax revenue. So, do you want to leave it at that or do you want to be more? Uh, well, I think that would that will cover it initially. I think Councillor Judd, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, there a seconder for the motion, please. Thank you, the Deputy Mayor moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion? So the campaign, Councillor Judd, is that um, something that uh, we've got to write to the federal member, the, the minister, etc., Councillor Judd? Yes, yeah, so I think in the first instance we'd probably write to a low federal member. Yep. Uh, also, it's, it's, um, as you probably realise, Councillor Scott is um, getting high profile now and trying to work with mm -hmm. them. And, and, uh, She'll be pushing it as well, so we really know uh, have mm. to be right behind her and her, her efforts. Mm. So, but uh, I think it's in the first instance as well, a federal point. member. Yeah, and and sending a copy, of course, to uh, her as president of both the state and, and federal body. 
Okay, thank you. Moved, uh, Councillor Judd, second of the Deputy Mayor, that Council support the current campaign by Local Government New South Wales to restore the level of funding under the Federal Assistance Grants to Councils to be 1% uh, yeah, Federal Financial Assistance Grants, which is a Federal fund, uh, to be 1% of Commonwealth tax revenue. So that captures the motion, Councillor Judd and Deputy Mayor, and, and that we write, and further, that we write to the Federal Member for Riverina. Outlining Council's position. A strong position. <laughs> well, so, Councillor Judd's happy. The Deputy Mayor, are you happy? Okay, moved and seconded. If there's no further discussion, Councillor Slay. This isn't really a discussion of this motion. I've just noticed reading the one above, the Acting General Manager has gone to some trouble to point out that cost shifting and depreciation are quite different. I'm afraid we'll have to change the grammar then because it'll have to be schedules a workshop to discuss the issues of cost shifting and depreciation and their budget implications. It's only a very minor point, no, no, but no. given how much you've stressed it... Thank right you concern. very much, Councillor Slay. So we'll just... Um, We'll just go back to Resolution 199-2021. Okay. Thank you. So uh, that one uh, is fine. The move and second are happy with that and council are happy with that. Thank you. The resolution 200 slash 2021. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'm going to put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, nothing further uh, then in terms of business with notice, so business without notice, and uh, we'll go around the chamber. Councillor Smith. Uh, nothing today, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Slay? Nothing today, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Oliver? Nothing today. <laughs> thank you. It's not going to be consistent. Councillor Winky? No, nothing today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Councillor McLaren? Nothing today, thank All you. All right. This is interesting. Councillor Judd? I'll break the system. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Judd? The, um, <coughs> I do note that at Airway Park in the last two days, despite the weather, there's been two zone uh, athletics carnivals. And uh, they've been carrying on over there, just drizzly rain, the works. And I'll just mention the fact that I was really glad, even though they've been out in the open, they've had the facilities now at the recreation ground improved, both for the football clubhouse and the manager's block, that they've been able to call on to you know, have showers, mm. change and all that thing. So, it's a great being able to see those facilities being used, mm. not just by local school, but there's a stack of the schools coming from the, from the zone to be at Area Park. So mm. uh, it was good to see those uh, mm. we'll upgrade those amenities for, unfortunately, days like the last couple of days. Mm. So thank you. No, thanks, Councillor Judd. That is great to, to hear that. And, and I always think it's great for a, a town or a village to host a, a zone carnival or a regional, whatever it is, uh, bring people to your patch, it's, um, or our patch, it's, yeah, it's great. Thanks, Councillor Judd. Uh, Councillor Reinhold. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just uh, one little thing. Um, the Caravan Park on Juni Road, the clotheslines need a little bit of attention. Okay. As in, well, thank you. some lines. Thank you. So the Director has uh, noted that. Thank you very much, Councillor Reinhold. Uh, the Deputy Mayor. So the Deputy Mayor has nothing to. <laughs> right, thank you. Well, I'm going to be like Councillor Judd and Councillor Reinhold. I just have a couple of things. Uh, the terminal area forecast update. I received a note today from Minister McCormack's office 
the Bureau of Meteorology have confirmed that the Terminal Area Forecast Review, the TAF Review final report, is currently with Minister Lay for... Is it Lee or Lay? Minister L L Lay, thank you, for approval. And once approved, it is expected that the TAF Review report will be published and released either in late June or early July. Uh, and we hope that the recommendations uh, that have been agreed to uh, and go from there as to the way forward. So if Council remembers that Tamora Shire was in that initial list for that to be reinstated, that is still there in the final report. So let's um, hope and pray that uh, the Minister uh, gives it that tick of approval, because that will be a game changer uh, again for this shire and our, um, our growing uh, aerodrome and air park estate. So that is for your information. Councillors, um, the second thing of three items is uh, you would have received the communique from Minister uh, Hancock on the 10th of June, just noting uh, several amendments um, to the various sections of the Local Government Act. But one I, I found... Uh, interesting, certainly in relation to some of our neighbours, was that the Act as amended also includes a new process for councils constituted within the last 10 years to submit a business case with supporting reasons to the Minister for a de-amalgamation of an area. So that is significant uh, news, particularly for those that have been merged. There is that 10 years, uh, 10 year window um, or for those that have been merged within the last 10 years, to submit a business case. And then it also says in the legislation now that, um, uh, that the uh, Minister has to refer it to the Boundaries Commission and that that report has to be released, our final report, within 28 days. So that's a huge, uh, that's a huge issue and that uh, was put up by the, um, the crossbenchers and, and ultimately accepted... So that's uh, very interesting because currently the Boundaries Commission uh, have our reports on Snowy Valleys and Kutagundagai were in by the end of September and uh, the Minister is still considering those uh, and you just obviously have to feel for um, those councils not knowing one way or the other what's uh, happening with local government elections looming on the 4th of September. So I just uh, <coughs> mentioned that to you. Lastly, councillors on business without notice, there is a letter, <coughs> pardon me, here that I've been asked to, uh, to read to you. And this is a letter from uh, Mrs Lynn James, the wife of our uh, Foundation Shire President, Tamora Shire. Uh, Mrs James writes, uh, Dear Mayor Rick, Tamora Shire councillors and our staff, thank you so much for the opportunity for Edwina and myself to attend your recent council meeting to remember Peter. Your very special gift was greatly appreciated and I shall wear it with pride. I would also like to thank uh, Council for all the help that they have given us during this very difficult time. It will always be remembered. Fond regards, Lynn James. So that, uh, Council, this is from Mrs James and, uh, and again I do thank you for your tremendous support uh, for the James family. Councillors, there being no further uh, business without notice, a motion to receive the information paper, please. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Councillor Smith moved and second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Councillors, are there any items in the information paper that you wish to draw to Council's attention? Councillor Judd. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just mentioned on uh, page 251 on, onwards about the... Um, Oh, yeah. uh, New South Wales Local Roads Congress, Landers uh, uh, Remedies Engineering Services, and I attended uh, the reports there. I'll just highlight a couple of things. Um, I mentioned about the Round 3 local roads being open. Um, on page 253, the, uh, on the talk by Bernard Carlin from Transport for New South Wales, one inter interesting thing was the um, move or possible move by the department to look favourably at uh, 40k an hour speed zones in uh, pedestrian areas or on main streets and uh, I know we've looked at that before both for tomorrow and area park and uh, probably not much, haven't got much sympathy for it but maybe the uh, 
with more emphasis on road safety, that may be changing. So uh, maybe the manager might want to comment on that before I continue. But. Unless it's really necessary. We're talking <laughs> pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Judd. Further? Yep. Just over the page on 254, uh, there was comment from the audience here on the, the um, they're talking about asset manage, asset valuation and depreciation before. Well, the um, comment came about, uh, about if you do your asset uh, valuing properly, you know, the investigations, the comment is, if we do our job really well, we might find out things we really don't want to know. So um, uh, <laughs> that is a worry so, sometimes. So. Mm. And anyway, that's all on that, uh, unless anyone else has any questions on that. Thank you very much, Councillor Judd, and thank you to Councillor Judd and the manager for the for that report that uh, I'm sure Councillor found very interesting. Uh, Councillors, any further items in the uh, information paper? If not, in accordance with Section 10A of the Local Government Act 1993, I advise that there are several matters that are deemed confidential and accordingly I require a motion. Uh, council, I advise that uh, Council has adopted the following motions that have been brought forward from confidential and those motions are on the motion of Councillor Reinhold and Councillor Slay that we move into confidential, the motion was carried. The minutes of the Confidential Assets and Operations Committee from the 8th of June 2021 on the motion of Councillor Winky, second of the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair, it was resolved that the reports be received. The motion was carried. On the motion of Councillor Slay and second of Councillor Smith, it was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted and the motion was carried. The minutes of the Economic Development and Visitations Committee on the 8th of June 2021 on the motion of Councillor McLaren, second of Councillor Winky, it was resolved that the reports be received and the motion was carried. Uh, on the motion of Councillor McLaren and Councillor Slay, it was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted and the motion was carried. Application for development infrastructure deferred payment on the motion of Councillor McLaren and Councillor Slay, it was resolved that Council provide in principle support for the application under policy EW16 on the condition that the following criteria can be met. One, development consent is granted. Two, detailed designs are submitted for more accurate costing. Three, council can secure appropriate finance. And further, that the application satisfies council's legal requirements. And the motion was carried. On the motion of Council Oliver and uh, Councillor Winky, it was resolved that Council moves the motions from closed business into open Council, and the motion was carried. On the motion of Councillor Smith and Councillor Slay, it was resolved that Council moves out of closed session at 7.22pm and into open Council, and that motion was carried. Uh, Councillors, could I please have a motion to formally adopt those resolutions? Thank you, Councillor Judd. Councillor McLaren moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Thank you. There being no further business, I declare the meeting closed.